good. Oh, very, very slightly, but not enough to get in the way. Hello, good. everyone. Thanks for talking over that, guys. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Resident Arcade. It's 6.30 on Wednesdays and we are, hopefully, apart from that just then, going to have, as I said, a technical, technically fine show today, fingers crossed. Let us know if there's anything, any problems. Um, today we're talking about uh, gaming moments. Uh, we've got, again, quite a big list of things to show you. Uh, hopefully we'll, uh, we'll be able to provide some entertainment at the same time. Uh, obviously today we, we are joined by uh, Sam. Say hello. Hello. <laughs> Lou, hello, and Steve, hello, and uh, and me of course. I'm Chris, uh, and I'm the host. I am your main host, in fact. And these guys are co-hosts. Peon hosts. Peon hosts. Not as good hosts. Well, probably better than me, in fact. In uh, whatever. Right. Um. So yeah, uh, we're talking about gaming moments today. Uh, just a quick parental advisory, as I do every week. We do try not to swear. I keep saying this, but then I come out <laughs> you with don't the even try. <laughs> most swear words ever. I am really, really going to try not to swear this time. And it's only because I'm with my friends. That's the only reason that I uh, I do use expletives. I uh, I don't do it on my other shows. <laughs> and not, not that to my knowledge. I might have said a few, uh, a few of the milder words, but... Um, this shows well because we're talking about gaming moments. We're going to be talking. About, we're going to have quite a few spoilers. Um, there's going to be a lot of like game endings or big moments in games or or reveals that are uh, that are not so you know that are quite big in games. There's a few in particular that I'm uh, I've got in my head. Um, just before we start, as well, we also do two other shows. We do Mondays and when, uh, Mondays and Fridays. Uh, on Mondays, we do a single-player playthrough of a game uh, with commentary. At the moment, I'm playing Metal Gear Solid One, uh, the original, on PSX, and Lou and Sam joined me last week for commentary. Um, this week, this Monday, Steam may well be available for it, and we may be uh, able to get onto so. it. Uh, and on Fridays, so this Friday, we're doing a co-op stream with me, Lou, and Steve. Uh, and it's uh, it'd be probably going to be PC games, but at the moment we're playing Planet Explorers, and that's probably what we're going to be playing uh, this Friday as well. Um, apart from that, if you guys, anybody watching, wants to get involved, just uh, just ask us a question in chat, and we'll uh, we'll try and answer. So onto the subject, gaming moments. Subject at hand, yeah. I mean, I think I think just to kind of reiterate on the spoiler thing, many of these things are in fact the biggest spoilers in the games, and I think that's part of why they're making. That's why the moments really aren't there. The kind of the bit, the cumulative thing that the game has led up to. Yeah, um, I said there's a, there's a few in particular that when I, I mean these are these are moments that I had as either a child when I was playing games uh, or, or younger. I don't even know when I started playing games. I'll be honest. Um, or it's or it's something like it, it is a it's a it's a huge part of of the story. I mean, for example, I'm talking about. Um, I'll, I'll kick us off with a moment. In fact. Um, Star Wars: Knights of the Old Republic keeps popping into my popping into my head. Now, which of you guys have played that? I've, I've not played, played it, but I never got very far through. Yeah, uh, I'm I've, the same. I, I kind of played it for about an hour or so. I've played never it. Never played it. Okay, this is um, it's a it's a Bioware game. It's an early Bioware game, and it's um, it's basically a, a point and click. Um, with lots of different commands and stuff, but you're playing as a Jedi, you're playing as Revan. Uh, no, you're not playing as Revan. Sorry, you're playing as a, a unnamed Jedi. However. Towards the end of the game, um, there is there's a, a particular reveal that uh, that comes up that's we'll spoil it for anybody in the uh, who plays it. And in fact, I've already I've already spoiled it for you. I'm afraid because it is you are Revan. Revan is this um, kind of mythical Jedi that that used to be the apprentice of Darth Malik in the game. Um, I'm actually just going to try and try and find the video while I'm, t I'm talking about it. Um, it's kind of good that I, I kind of monologue the first one myself. If you guys haven't played it. Um, give me a second. I'll just find the Star Wars. So I remember Mario. Knights of the Old Republic kind of coming out, and everyone it was kind of came out not long after Final Fantasy VII, didn't it? It was a very early game. Really? And I remember people. I remember people comparing it to it. Yeah, uh, late nineties was it? Knights of the Old Republic. I really can't remember. I'll be honest. Um, I'm just gonna. Sh I'm gonna put a video together for you. And this it, is the this is the moment that it reveals that you are actually the Jedi that you've been chasing all along. Um, you are the Jedi you're looking for. Yeah, it is, <laughs> it's 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 fairly convoluted, but it um, yeah, it's um, it's a moment in the game that that 
there's there's look- a lot of tertiary characters or secondary characters as well. Um, the guy that's on the screen now, Malik, he is he's like the the main antagonist of the game. And all the way through the game, you're you're trying to find him. But there's this legend of Revan, and Revan is his apprentice, Malik's apprentice, and he um, he. he, he he disappeared all of a sudden. Um, Malik knew kind of what happened to him because of the force and all the other stuff. But <coughs> at this point in the game, which is right close to the end, you you have to start making decisions as to, right, should I actually go keep going down the light side, which is what I chose to do in the game. It's one of those with choices and consequences again. Um, or should I should I turn to the dark side and help and become it? It doesn't really matter by that point. You just get a different ending, I think, regardless of what you do. Can, so, can I say that he looks a bit like Cap Picard after major dental surgery? <laughs> <laughs> it does a little bit, yeah. Um, this isn't particularly interesting, is it, and revealing? Let me try and find a, a bit of a... <laughs> it's just a wobbling Picard man. <laughs> just oh. so why is it that your character doesn't know who he is? Um, something to do with a brain hemorrhage or something. Basically, you got you get your ship at the very beginning... Or, or, or rather, the beginning of the legend of Revan, your ship gets taken over by Jedi, um, and every all the, I think Malik and Revan both have different ships in this particular battle, and they uh, Revan's gets taken over, and then he's he's assumed dead, uh, but by the by the end of it, it's just basically, yeah, you are Revan, and you're like, <gasps> even as the player, you know, it's one of those moments where you're like, oh. Actually, I didn't even get that. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't, I didn't personally because it's a quite an involving story. There's a lot of obviously, as you can see, lots of dialogue. Um, the gameplay itself may not agree with everyone because it's more of a point-and-click, turn-based combat type thing. Um, but I, I really enjoyed it, and it's a lot one of, those of people games, did. Yeah, one of those games I really want to play again as well. And next to this, uh, next to the Old Republic Two as well is again just as worthy in my opinion. It looks a little bit better. It's, you know, it's got. It's got again. You're in it again as Revan, but you know you're Revan this time, and you've got again lots more choices and consequences. There's lots of levels. Oh, I think this is a flashback actually to when you were Revan. Um, it does seem like a lot of the um, a lot of the reveals in the Star Wars uh, mythos revolve around being someone's son. Yeah, well, mm. that's, that's what they. they <laughs> yeah, it's enough, it's, um, just stick with that formula. Records back in the old Republic. <laughs> And again, it's it's quite weird watching these videos with games where you can choose your sex and choose your like the look of your character, like Mass Effect type games. You know, this is one one of the earlier like being able to choose what you look like exactly. Well, I think I think actually you probably just had certain models to choose from in this one. Um, this did set Bioware's formula, didn't it? Really, I mean, you can see a clear they- progression from this to. Um- to the stuff like uh, Mass Effect, I guess. Yeah, and Dragon Age and all that kind of stuff. It's all mm. the same kind of um, engine. What's the engine called? Is it the... I have no idea. Oh, it's got a cool name anyway, like like all the engines do. But yeah, I uh, I, I did do a, a review for uh, Dragon Age uh, Dragon Age Origins a while ago, and that, that uses the same engine, but it's just a lot you know further updated. The Odyssey en- engine, based on the Aurora engine, apparently. And I said there were games before this that had similar similar kind of things in it. Anyway, so it's quite it's quite long winded this end bit. Unfortunately, the video I've chosen might be high quality, but it's not particularly interesting. It's no, it's just a wobbly bald man. Yeah, it has uh, one of those animations from back in the day when it would just be the same repeated and head back forth and back yeah. and forth, just the same robotic repetition. Yeah. Uh, but again, <laughs> you look at games like um, Dragon Age, um, specifically things. Uh, was it? I think Origins had it. You you could sit in the cutscenes for ages, and you could watch the characters, and the characters would do different things constantly, and there'd be repetition. You know, it'd be variations on what they were doing, and it, and you and you would hardly get the same animation twice. I quite like that as it got further on. Mm. Um. So yeah, guys, what are you? Have you got any favourite moments? Um. Well, I think we should probably bring up the the. This, the, the kind of big moment, the the moment that everyone talks about, and that's the I've already moment. Found it. <laughs> Go on. The the moment from Final Fantasy VII. Yeah, I'm already highlighting yep. it. In yeah, the you're already highlighting. <laughs> yes, you are. Yeah. Um, obviously, <clears throat> this is a big spoiler. Like uh, many of the things are, but but basically, one of the main characters in the game dies. Um, dies in quite a dramatic quite, fashion quite a dramatic way yeah basically it's it's nice that it doesn't really pull any punches basically this this character who you is a playable character right from the very beginning of the game and is is touted as a love interest for your main character um at this crucial point in the game is killed by the main antagonist of the game 
uh, basically stabbed with a bloody big sword. The bastard. And it's, yeah, I mean, I think everyone <coughs> reacted so in such a visceral way to this moment. Uh, I'm sorry, Sam, that you didn't really get to this this part of the game, but it is is a major moment. It was. It's, it, it's it's emotional. I think. I think that was the thing that did it for me. It was like I'd invested so much into these characters. I know Cloud was, a, was my favorite character in that game, obviously, but and Ares was kind of. I don't know she was kind of a side character to me. I didn't <clears> use her that much. I wasn't that impressed with her skills, you know. But yeah. But as part of uh, like the character development went, Hair and Cloud kind of they started to form this relationship that I personally saw continuing right to the end of the game. And after Eris died, I was actually a little bit apprehensive about playing the game again because it, I don't know it kind of like it, it it left a bit of a bad taste in my mouth. Not like I had, I had to take anything away from the game, but it it had that kind of emotional effect on me. Yeah, and the, the weird thing is, is that you have to fight a boss battle straight after this moment, and the, the whole time you're fighting the battle, it's playing this sad music. It's not the yeah. normal fight uh, music or the battle music. It's just this um, Eris' like, kind of sad, somber theme. It's bizarre. It really kind of gets to you. Um, and it is one of the defining moments. I think many people will probably push this out as one of their big moments in any game if anyone's played this. I mean, um, I think most people have played that game, I'll be honest with you. It's, uh, yeah, yeah, they have. I think there's, there's not many people who haven't played Final Fantasy VII. Um, and even people who haven't um, will know about that se that section, just because you can't really avoid that kind of a spoiler. No, no. It's it's um, it's very, very well known. Like I think I said to you guys the other day, it's in the uh, the gaming sort of pop culture zeitgeist. I think yeah. everyone, everyone knows of it. I know about it. and I, I knew about it before I even started playing uh, Chris's copy of Final Fantasy VII a couple of years ago. Yeah. So it's very well known. As I'm um, uh, watching the stream back there, I can't remember what that piece of material is actually drops. It's the it's holy her. material. Yeah, it's hers. It, it's white material. It's not. Uh, it's not useful. She even yeah. says that she has a part of a speech when um, Cloud meets she her. Is that she? She says, "My mother gave it to me. It's. It doesn't do anything, but it makes me feel safe or whatever, something like that." But it, it <clears throat> turns out it does do something, and that's yeah. at the very end of the game. Yeah, well, it's yeah. <laughs> that's that's not one of our moments, so we shan't it's spoil not. it. No, no, <laughs> no. no, we'll leave we'll, we'll leave you with that big horrible spoiler, but we won't spoil the ending. There's um, a boss at the end. <laughs> on, the, on the same on the same uh, same game, I think it was you, Steve, that put down leaving. Ah, uh, yeah, I can see what about to play. Um, I think by the time you actually get to this point in the game, you've already invested a quite a long time, or at least uh, when I played through what I did, because I'm the type of person who has to try and collect everything. And uh, when you leave Midgar and you see the sprawling world in front of you, it was just a little bit overwhelming. Uh, I'd never seen that before in a game with that type of skill and you know so many opportunities and places to visit. It was just you know, like a kid in a candy store type of scenario. Where do I go? What do I do? Yeah. And uh, <laughs> Get attacked by some random crap. Yeah, and then uh, then go and attack that. Uh, was it the giant snake or the Midgar's Olam? Mid Midgar's all. Yeah, you yeah. don't all try and attack thing, it. Yeah. You tend to yeah. avoid it as much as possible. You can kill <laughs> it. Him, but just, but I, can't, I was trying uh, to fight it for the first like well, fifty deaths or something. I was determined that you you were supposed to beat it, and then eventually yeah. figured out that if I just try and avoid it. I could actually progress the game. Yeah, What's I, nice I, I also it, did that. <laughs> I, I completely agree with Steve on this one. I think it's amazing because you'll, you'll go through the, the first part of the game solely in Midgar in this big city and think the, the entire world will be limited to this city. And then you walk out and you realise you've just been in one location for that whole time. I, I think it was about 10 hours before I got to the Somewhere uh, there. Midgar. I think, holy crap, there's an entire world. There's, you... there's not just this city, but many other cities to go through. You know, my first experience of uh, Final Fantasy VII was, uh, I remember distinctly being in year 11 or year 12 at school, and um, I remember some like some of the bullies in our year talking about it behind me at class, and they were talking about chocobos or chocobos or whatever you say. I always call them chocobos, I don't know. It's because you like to pronounce everything differently to everyone yeah, else. With, with extra O's in it. What? How, how are they? How is it said? Choco chocobo, I think. Chocobo, right. So they were talking about chocobos, and I was like, I actually just thought they were food or something that you ate. I didn't know what they were because they were talking. I really <laughs> didn't little, get... Little chocolate homeless people. Something like that, <laughs> yeah. I, I had no idea. And, um, and yeah, these guys were... Um, 
these guys were talking about it anyway I spoke to one of them and I said what, what's, what's Final Fantasy it sounds weird <laughs> it sounds really weird <laughs> and uh, yeah it's just it, seven on the end of it yeah and I, I anyway I tried it and I was like actually you know I've just really really clicked with me and I loved it I loved everything about the game in fact mm-hmm. and, uh, I, I yeah, remember trading just... in about uh, five or six games in order to get Final Fantasy 7 when it was released really wow yeah well it's obviously been I mean how old were we when it was released? You, 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 <coughs> I was still at school. I was um, the last year of school doing. I think I was supposed to be my first year of college. Yeah. I say moving on from um, Final Fantasy VII. Let's uh, just, and we might as well talk about Final Fantasy VIII. Yeah. Uh, which has a few moments in it. I mean, I, ha- <laughs> I can't, co- I haven't completed Final Fantasy VIII. I played it I. so many times, but I had major PC problems when it came out, and I got it on the PC specifically because I didn't really do consoles back then. Um, Apart from NES, the, the Nintendo consoles, weirdly, I don't do Playstations and Xboxes and things like that. Um, but yeah, I remember when I watched Final Fantasy VIII, or when I played it, that the FMV blew me away at the time, mm-hmm. and it was particularly uh, fluid. There was a lot of... Um, sorry. Um, there was a lot of... Um, I don't know. The, the, it, there was a lot of character in it. Even though I didn't particularly like the main character... Uh, Squall, I thought he was a bit wet in comparison to yeah. people like Cloud. Cloud was a bit emo, though, really, wasn't he? But well, the they all are. Emo. They yeah, all are. They're all a bit like that, aren't they? They all have that that face. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know the one I mean. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, this this, is, um, uh... if, it doesn't look particularly great now, but I still think it looks okay. I mean, I think it looks excellent. I, if... I think it's the. The, the characters look a little bit kind, kind of weird sort of Korean sex dolls, but... <laughs> um, yeah, there's no bump mapping on the faces or anything like that, you know, there's no But it, I know what you grit. mean, there's still a lot of character to it, and for the time, this MV, FMV was amazing. I think, if anything, they maybe focus a bit too heavily on the FMV in this game, now, at the expense of some of the gameplay. I believe... I that's become more common in the later sequels too, funnily enough. I, I've believe... not played anything after 9. I believe that the end sequence to the game. Have you guys completed it? Yep, I've seen it. I've watched it many times. It's got I, like a. It's it's really good actually. I haven't watched the end sequence yet, and I keep meaning to. Um, it might be on this video itself, but I'm not going to click around. Probably, and try but there's and find there's it. one there's one I've mentioned which was a big kind of uh, goosebumps moment, um, which was the landing on Dollet, which is the first uh, the first like major mission you've got basically after being recruited into the the teenage army or whatever the hell they are. Um, but it's it's really well done. It's very cinematic, and it was weird at the time to have games do cinematic things. There was games doing game things and movies doing movie things, but to have this crossover where you had like, like inventive camera angles and and like little gags like the uh, the water rippling, you realise and you've been looking at um looking at the surface of the water and stuff, really impressive um, and kind of set up. What wasn't actually a very good <laughs> section of the game, but had a really beautiful intro to it. Yeah, great music I, as well. I, I do remember this down looking at it. Yeah, again, all of them, all of them have. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of these with music uh, that uh, that make the moment. I think that yeah. make the actual moment in the game. But yeah, I remember this. I remember, I remember all of this. Yeah, it's a it's a really good part. There's a great great music and sound to it as well. It's kind of heartbeat in the background and this stuff. This is high high tech iPad. Yeah, <laughs> also known as acetate. The thing I loved about Final Fantasy games, though, the ones I've played, is that that the set obviously they're set in a completely different world to ours. You know, it's it's all high fantasy type stuff, but they've also got like an old school feel to them. They've got yeah. this like retro Final... steampunky ish. Yeah, Fa- feel. Final Fantasy VII was hugely steampunk. Final Fantasy VI was as well. This one is kind of a bit. I, I don't even know what you would call oh, it. Oh, look at the transition there between yeah. the FMV and the. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Then it just it was uh, coming. Uh, selfie and Quistus. Oh, Had Quistus! Such big oh, on them. God, I hated Quistus. <laughs> I hated them all. In fact, I, I, every single character in this game. That's the main reason that I didn't complete it because I, I couldn't get along with the. I didn't like the controls. I didn't like the people. Um, I didn't like anything about it. It was a great game. It was a great game. <laughs> See, deal. for me, eight was such a letdown after seven. Yeah, but I'd... seven's not great, though, is it? That's the thing. Sef- it's, when you look at the gameplay, was play, great. But no, no, I, I, I'm a massive fan. 
I just mean that it wasn't great in terms of uh, the controls and the again that there was much better games out then in terms of how it controlled and how the UI was laid out and things like that. It, it wasn't all about the controls in Final Fantasy though. It was about the story for me. It was about the uh, the the atmosphere, the like, how it drew in. I I cared about the characters, like you said. I, I was I, I was actually quite upset when Eris died. Yeah. Oh, so was and, I. Totally. Yeah, and I, I never felt any connection to the characters in Final Fantasy VIII. Yeah. yeah, they were just sort of whiny teenagers, weren't they? That's yeah. what did it for me. You know, I think when I got to the, um, what's it called? The quad, that they called it. The quad within the college or something. Uh, I don't know. I can't, I can't even remember the story, I'll be honest. Um, I got to that bit and I played around for a bit, left, did a few extra missions and then and then I just got, I went, no, don't like it. And plus, I'm sick of it crashing. I've had enough. Mm. I got so. quite far into it, but yeah, it's just... Um... I do. I should really watch the ending though, because it, I think it'll. It's apparently one of the best FMV sequences ever. It's probably it's really, really well really done good. for the time. It's, it's really well done. I um. I always. I find it interesting that that's quite a common complaint leveled at Final Fantasy VIII is that people didn't like the characters as much. And I, I always think that with any kind of story, especially not maybe not especially fantasy, but it seems to be more applicable to fantasy, is that it doesn't. It's not even so much about all the big things that happen in the plot and the narrative and the world. As much as who they happen to, that's mm. what that you have to have something you can relate to, a, a, some a emotional touch point that you are invested in. You can have like a, a, that end death and VC because might be great, but is it really that great if you don't care about what's happening? This is why this is why things like you know Transformers don't click with people that are I mean, that are I... a bit more discerning in their taste because there's no emotional investment in what's going on. Mm. I, agree. I, I can, I can, yeah, I totally agree with that. And I've mentioned many times before on this podcast and many others that um, the main character in Assassin's Creed Three, Connor, yeah, is the exactly. biggest, the biggest bell end on the planet. And it just, <laughs> it just, it made me hate the game even more than than I already did because of all the bugs. You know, I was like, you whiny bastard! You're, you're not even. He's talking about. He's always talking about saving and helping his people, but it's all about him, and it's all about. Oh, I don't really want to do that. You will, you will do that because I'm controlling you. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it was just all. It's just like, oh, you know, the plight of my people, and and and. But he ends up turning on him at the end, and there's a reason for it. But it's oh, just. Is he a Native American in it or something? He is a Native he American. Is, yeah. yeah. Right. It's not again. I you know I'm I'm actually more on the side of Native Americans than corporate America at the end of the day. But you know, it's it's still the way that he's implemented as a character. It's just not. Cool. Like he, he, especially when Ezio was the character before that, mm. and, and Ezio is by far one of the coolest motherfuckers on the planet. He's he's brilliant. I love Ezio. <laughs> if well, you not um, played them, it's it, you obviously what now. <laughs> I, well, it, it's probably not a. Did we put Assassin's Creed moment in there? I think just a leap of faith was in there as a yeah. as a thing. I put in but, the leap um, of faith because because it was a cool moment in the first one. Um, yeah. We could. You and know then what a really crap moment in every other one. I think we're going a bit off topic, but I reckon uh, game characters is definitely a, a, a topic for discussion. But we'll, that's another another topic for another time. It yeah. is. It's I down know. on our list. The leap, the leap of faith for me. Uh, I mentioned this before. Was it a moment that made me? It made me. It ha I had I had like vertigo of some sort. You know, it made my legs feel funny. Like whenever I've been on a roof and I'm looking down and I don't feel stable, my legs go a little bit funny. Um, it's not. I don't think I have vertigo, but that's just one thing that I get back from it. And jumping off the leap of faith for the first few times in the first games, uh, it just it made me feel weird. And I like that. I like the fact that a game can give me that inertia or, or whatever it is. You know. Do you know what gauges that for me? Uh, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. You know when you go out into the countryside and you just feel like caning it around, go off a cliff, and you be like, you get that weird lurching feeling as you start to fall mm. in your stomach. Yeah. Yeah, well, it wasn't a stomach thing for me. It was just I said my legs felt funny. I can't really explain it more than that. <laughs> just it's, <laughs> it's one of those things that I I have. And here he goes. This is his first one in the first game. The leap of faith is kind of good and, and crap at the same time it's, because that's cool. But like as if, come on, no, yeah, <laughs> and he will be turned everything. inside out by that impact. And he's, <laughs> yeah. and he's conveniently like there's always conveniently a hair pile underneath it as well. But you can't pick leaves. you can't pick holes in a, a major game mechanic, you know, like that. I think it's uh, you nah, have to you I have to you have to give a, give it some credit. I think I think it was a really good uh, a good inclusion, but unfortunately, yeah, they rely on it a little bit too much with all of the other repetitive stuff going on. I think 
Talking about falling from the sky, Steve's got a good one from a uh, an old game. Yeah, I was just about to bring that one up. Um, it's an old game I first played on the uh, the PSX. Uh, it was by Shiny, I think, uh, a yep. British development team uh, called uh, Murder yeah. Death Kill. Um, and if I remember the story rightly, you're a, you're a janitor who gets given a, a special suit by the, your employer who's a crazy professor and then basically sent on lots of these uh, like assassination missions basically to, to save the world. And on the, uh, the opening sequence of the game, um, you basically jump from, uh, from, is it a space station or I don't know what suborbital is. craft or something? <laughs> and um, you've, you've got like a, it's not a wingsuit, but it has uh, like an integral parachute. And uh, your, your gun is basically a massive cone that fits on the end of your nose. So <laughs> your whole suit streamlined. And you basically dive down to Earth on the first mission to, um, to destroy a giant mine crawler that's... Uh, that's carving its way through a city. And pick right, up a super chain gun while you're on it. Oh, yeah, the, it's, it's the better you do in this bit, the, the better kit you get when you start yeah. the mission. Uh, what was there, that nuke weapon you got on it? A world's smallest nuclear bomb any, or something? Yeah. Hmm. I, can't, I can uh, barely remember anything about the game other than uh, it looked great. It looked very surreal. Yeah. Um, the video you can see here, the design of the game was really, really kind of almost dreamlike, wasn't it? Yeah. It, it was very ahead of time. Well. It was very fast. Yeah, it doesn't um, feel like he's, he's like he's sliding across the floor more than anything. But, but the, yeah, uh, yeah, you had a gun on your hand, but your, your sniper rifle was basically your face. You just had this big long face with a gun in it, and you looked at things and shot them. It was really cool. Mm. Yeah, I, uh, that's, that's I, an oldie. I, I am not aware of that. Speaking, that's a very old game. Speaking of oldies, and again, none of you guys have probably played this. Um, a game called Shadowgate that I played on uh, the NES. They've recently yep. done a Kickstarter to um, to do a remake. In fact, it's released, and I bought it today because I was watching a podcast, and it reminded me that it was coming out. Um, anyway, it was Sh- Shadowgate was a it was a NES title where you would it was a point and click adventure, but it was like one of the, those old text adventures where it was single screens, but the screen would change depending on what you did. It was a puzzle game all the way through, and um, it was really really difficult to to get to the end because there was so many ways to die in it. Um, <laughs> just the, for the, you the, maybe Chris well no no I think genuinely it was a difficult game it was one of those games where I, I most people had to look up guides online to, uh, not online the internet didn't even <laughs> exist back then they used to have to look up guides and find out stuff from like PC um, console magazines and that you know um, but there was a lot of uh, there was a lot of like you have to do things exactly right, and if you can, you know, a lot of adventure games, you could select an object and then try and use it on everything on the screen, and it yeah. would, you know, it'd only be used on the right one. It wasn't like that. It was one of those games where if you used it on the wrong thing, it would, it, 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 it that'd be it. You'd be broken for the rest of the game. You couldn't play it, but you had to be clever with um, with it. Anyway, this the, the newer version has. Um, it's got voiceovers. It's got um, it's got a lot higher production value. The particular moment from this game um, that I I wanted to talk about was the the final the bit the end at the end. And I don't think this is going to spoil it for anyone because I think it's very unlikely anyone will want to play it. Um, but it's um, <laughs> it's a it's, it's, that? it's a behemoth. <laughs> anyway, so what you had to do at the very end is you had to use an orb with a staff to make like the staff of ages. And then at the end, you basically had to use the staff on the behemoth. And the behemoth, as you're just about to see, you fire the staff at him. He goes, ah! And then he grabs the <laughs> wizard, which is the main antagonist in the game, and then disappears. He's like Gandalf in uh, Lord of the Rings. Type yeah. Thing. This, this is before the films, by the way, so he obviously wasn't influenced right, by obviously the films. Obviously, well after the book, so it does actually <laughs> oh, happen yeah, in the yeah, book. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. It does happen <laughs> in the book. I'm just saying that it wasn't influenced by the particular... Instance in the book, anyway, uh, in the film. Sorry, no, the um, Balrog wasn't pink for a start. No, but that's it. I mean, basically, that as well. It's like an eight-bit um, uh, track as well on it. It was. It's just really cool. I really liked it. But the whole game was puzzles. It was really difficult from start to end. Um, and to get to that point, the reason that I, I claim that as a moment is that to get to that point, you had to be perfect. Uh, one of the puzzles, for example, oh. you had to drop. Um, you had to drop like a. a like a freezing orb into into a lake. You had to find this orb first via many other puzzles and stuff. You drop a freezing orb into a lake. The lake freezes. You walk over the lake and get a 
a sword or a spear or a key or something, I can't remember. And then you come back, but in order to, you can reuse the orb, but you have to use, if you see them little torches in the top top of the screen. I'm those, too busy looking at Brian Blessed's bollocks. <laughs> those, <laughs> those, um, those torches, are you can use them in the game, but you don't know that. It's one of those, it's like a UI thing that unless you accidentally come on, like move on to it on the UI, you don't realize that you can use them. And um yeah, you use that to, to melt the lake and then you can pick the orb up again. And it's just one of those things that there's a lot of thought went into it and I'm looking forward to playing the new game. I just got it for like nine or ten quid or something and uh, I'm going to play it through because it's got, I said, apparently got really good voice acting. It's got really good, um, uh, really decent graphics. But I think if you're not into puzzlers, don't go for it, you know. But yeah, that yeah. moment that moment is uh, <clears throat> prevalent in my mind. Cool. Sam, do you have a... I'm moment. actually wond I'm wondering which one to go for first. Should I go for an oldie or a newie? And I can't oh. decide. Oh, I'm going to go. Moment. I'm going to go for a newie just to bring us back up Ooh. to the more modern day. Um, okay. I'm going to go for uh, meeting the giraffes from The Last of Us. And I'll tell you what's so good about it. And it's 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 one of those videos that if I if, if you haven't played the game and you show it out of context, it will not have anywhere near the same impact. But yeah. hopefully no, we might have. A lot of these moments are like that, though. I, I'm yes, going to say I that agree. I've been deliberately avoiding all possible spoilers for Last of Us right, because I really want to play it. Same here. Yeah, so do you want to take it, your headphones it, off? It's, <laughs> no, I'm not I'm not going to give you any spoilers, seriously. It, it's, it's, right. a, it's a moment in the game. It's not part of the central plot. It, it's, a, it's a nice bit of... It's a character moment, and it comes after one of the really harshest, darkest, most disturbing sections of the game. And then you come into this section... And Ellie runs off ahead. You obviously you play as Joel. Ellie runs off ahead, and she sees these giraffes, and you run after her. And this really, really nice, sweet music starts playing. And you kind of at, at this point in the game, you kind of feel a bit like, oh god, man, this is like intense. Look at how good it looks. That game, though, on a side note, it's beautiful, isn't it? It's a beautiful looking game, man. It's really. I mean, they just. This is one of the, that's one of those games where graphics and aesthetics came together like in a perfect harmony. Yeah, I would say. Bit of trivia for you. It's actually just been voted the number one PlayStation magazine game of, of all time. This game, uh, Last of Us. It's, it's, well, it's this is why I really want to play it because it's got everything for me. I love it, the post-apocalyptic look of it. Yeah, it's I possibly like, the best game on the PS3. I think, as, in terms of their exclusives, I'd say probably is. Yeah, I like the moments. Um, sorry, I like the idea that she isn't crap AI as well. I like. I'd like to explore that and see what she's like and how she reacts to things. And yeah, she is good, man. Like, this, <clears> the, it's what's really good about it is lots. Of, you get to know the her not through cutscenes. Well, you do a bit. Most of the stuff you get to know her is she'll go, okay, hey, look, I found a book. You go up to her, you can press triangle, and she'll just talk to you about it. And you can choose to get to know her or not, as the case right. may be. Which and is does nice. That, does that alter? The game? No, no. The, 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 it's a it's a linear story. The cutscenes don't change. All that stuff stays exactly the same. It's just about how much you want to get invested in it. And you get to the rooftop here, and then you can just stand and watch them walking across this really beautiful vista. And this music plays, and it only stops when you stop and walk away. Like you can just stand there for hours if you want, and the giraffes will just mill around with this nice, really low key organ music playing. It just when I got to this point, like. After playing the game and being so intensely invested in it, I was getting a little bit teary eyed. I was a bit like, <laughs> uh, "That's what that that's th this is what we kind of need to to tell the world. Games aren't just violence and uh, and like plinky plunky noises these days. They are a form <laughs> of it. No, they, no, that's what pe that's what people who don't play games think. You speak to someone's <laughs> wife who's who's got you know who's who's got a husband who doesn't you know she doesn't really get involved, but she Not she. No, hang on, oh, whatever, <laughs> partner, whatever, it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? If you speak to someone who um, has that kind of, where she, oh. she, they don't get involved. I mean, luckily my wife does get involved in, in my game, so she understands kind of what they are and how they've evolved. But people have that perception that it's all about, it's all about killing people and violence, and it's not yeah. an artistic expression, form of expression like... It I know exactly what days. you mean. Um, I've had discussions out with people before, and I, I do consider computer games at their best to be an art form. Mm. It's an expression that someone is using a computer as a medium in order to, you know, well, express their emotions. And the same could be said for music, for movie, for artworks on canvas. It's just someone expressing a, a way that they want to feel in order to try and invoke an emotion in somebody. 
Mm. But it's is, unique. Go on. No, go on, go on, Sam. I was going to say, and it's also a unique art form. It's much more. It, it requires um, much more engagement and activity from you, as as a person appreciating <clears> it, than any other art form does. Yeah. Most of most other things like that are passive. Pretty much, by and large, games aren't really. You have to you you have to get to that certain point to see that I cutscene in Last of Us. You can't just watch that from the beginning. You can put an album on them into any track you want. You can skip to any scene in the film you want. You can walk around a gallery and look at the picture you want to see. You have to go through a game and get there. But what about a book? How engaging is a book in comparison? Because it's your mind making whatever you want of it. That's that's the, again the beauty. I'm not trying to say that games are <laughs> terrible. You know what I mean? But it's it, it's not you a have necessity to with yourself games. in a book. Yeah, it's not a necessity with games. You can make a game which is all about shooting aliens, and that's all yeah. there is to it. Um, but it it's I, nice when it happens in games, and that's what we're talking about. The gaming moments happen because someone thought I can make a game, but I can also do something else. I can also kind of make someone feel something. Yes. Uh, while I'm and doing this, it, and this that's emotional investment. Go on. Yeah, oh, this emotional oh. investment thing's not new either because you just talked about Final Fantasy VII. This thing that made everyone cry is from you know how old is that game now? Like ninety-seven. Ninety-seven, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, ninety-six, ninety-seven. Yeah. But I've got another um, emotionally ev- ev- evoking moment, but uh, I wonder whether we're getting a bit too uh, too dreary with this type of stuff. So we want to move on to something a bit more. No, no, go happy. on, no, it's fine. Um, Keys of War Three. Which bit? The end. Dom's death. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say that's not a happy bit, is it? <laughs> I, I, I tell you yeah. what, mate. By the end of Gears of War Three, I was in tears, and I was like, I'm watching a lot of muscly, bulky blokes that punch each other in the face for fun. You know, I'm watching yeah. these guys who are murderous, basically, and, and I'm nearly in bits. <laughs> I mean, uh, Dom's journey up to that point. I mean, uh, you start off the game, and he's basically searching like for his wife. And you go through Gears of War 1, I, th- I think it's either at the end of Gears of War 2 or the beginning of Gears of War 3 where he actually finds her. And she's been harvested by the locust and she's just like a shell of herself but she's still wearing a locket. And from that point on, Dom's just not the same person anymore. And yeah, it's, it's, really... It's, it's, it's really apparent in the game when you're playing it. And it all kind of builds up to this point where he sacrifices himself to, uh, to save the rest of the team. And it, it, I, I, I won't lie, it left me with a lump in my throat. Especially with the music that was playing over it as well, which is um, it was the music that was used for the advert, uh, you know, the uh, the piano version of Mad World. Yeah, yeah it was, I it um, was only music. I watched that clip and I haven't played Gears of War, and I actually was like, oh, so they nicked that version of Mad World that was on Donnie Darko, because that's where I saw that used first. Yeah, and it, that, when it was used in that film, it made me want to cry. So, but when I saw it in that, I was like. Oh, could they not have got the different thing is, bit of music? The thing is with this for me, it was that you'd spent so long with the character and you, you were so invested in him and his story and his plight. And again, by the end of it, you were like, oh my God, I can't believe they're actually going to do this. You know, I thought I yeah. thought he'd be there forever, you know? I, th- I think you were crying because he looks like you, Chris. They all <laughs> look a bit like me, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'd but, rather um, be Dom than anyone else, so I think he's, he's a bit gruffer. The coal train. <laughs> I don't oh, think I'd fit, I wouldn't fit the coal train's um, profile, would I? <laughs> but uh, just a beautiful bit in the game. Um, and if you read the books as well, that kind of uh, added to the whole emotion because it explored a lot more into Dom's emotions and the, his journey and the kind of anguish and torture he was going through trying to find his family. Can I ask you guys if any of you ever um, cried when reading a book? I've never cried. I have been again Ever. like bumping the throat moments, but uh No. Um, I, don't think I, I have. Works. Have you read The Green Mile? No. no. The Green Mile at the end. Oh, you've seen the film presumably yeah. though. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know the mouse. The the mouse is a slightly different story in the book, only slightly, but it's still yeah. it's there's a lot more focus on it. When the mouse finally goes at the end, oh mm. I feel I'm feeling weepy thinking about it now. It was it was so right. Poignant, I think, is the more. It, it wasn't particularly. It, yeah. Anyway, I'm going off subject. You are. Yeah. We don't want to see a bearded there, man cry. No, we don't. Oh don't want god. To see that shit. Right into your own beard. <laughs> oh, and it was Dom's reaction as well. It was Dom's reaction to his uh, to his death. Marcus's. 
Dom. Oh, yeah, Dom's reaction is, oh no, I'm dying. <laughs> oh, Dom's ah, reaction is, I'm on fire. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, there was Dom's reaction to his death, where he was just dis. Oh my god, Marcus. that guy, Marcus. His um, he, he was just like, well, he was in pieces again. In I he... know, he felt he he was acting like I felt <laughs> at that moment. And then at the very very end, I think he's just sat down, isn't he, looking out into yeah, into nothing or something. And it's like, is there going to be a fourth? It was, but he's, he's not the main character in it, so it's like, uh, isn't he? Mark Marcus is the main character. Not in the fourth one, though. And what's the fourth one called? Gears of War Judgment. I uh, haven't played it. If there is a fourth one, I didn't think there was. There has been another Gears of War game. I'm surprised you haven't. Yeah, it might be a spin-off, not an official sequel, but there's definitely been a fourth one. There was, uh, Gears, there was Gears one of War that... Judgment. Oh, there was one that was based on um, the blonde guy, and I can't remember his name. Oh, bad. Yeah. Yes, I have yeah. played I have. I've got it. I haven't played it. Sounds like a memorable game. <laughs> well, Obviously. I don't think he's a particularly great character, though. I mean, in my eyes. He's um, good in the first three because he adds a little bit of like comic relief to what are normally very dark and dreary situations. He kind of steps in there with his you know, big brass boots and oh, like, starts making jokes. He's memorable for that moment, but I, I, he's not a standalone character. No. I that sounds I... exactly like when they did that fourth Pirates of the Caribbean film. We're like, well, make Jack Sparrow the main character. You're like, well, that's not what he's supposed to be no. so nope we're getting a lot of stuff here for characters eh? I think think we can um, <coughs> maybe extend this one out into a separate show I oh, think yeah, characters should be a separate one yeah, we, get, yeah. we are allowed to talk about other things apart from the subject a little oh, bit know, as long know, as we kind of try and keep be... basically on track it's not, uh, not the end of the world is it um, oh, pick some up fun I'm yeah, gonna, let's, let's pick I'm gonna some Metal about... Gear Solid stuff. No, let's not yet. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> I want to talk about. Stuff yeah, I want to talk about um, a, a, a game that really wowed me. A lot of the moments I remember from games are get, uh, moments which are like awe inspiring. It's like, oh wow, look at this. Um, and I think the original one for me um, was the moment in the original Unreal. Um, so basically, at the start of the game, you're in a, a prison ship and you're the last survivor, the usual bump. Um, and this came out in the late 90s when all we played into that, pop, that to that moment had been games like Quake, uh, where you're running around dark corridors and she There wasn't a lot of story involved in Quake. Not a lot of story, but also not a lot of grandeur. And mm. then in this game, you walk outside of the ship for the first time and you're in this huge valley. Um, and there's birds flying around, and there's there's like diff there's two or three moons in the sky, and <coughs> you realise you you've been in this giant ship, but it's it's like this Midgar moment from Final Fantasy VII. You're suddenly in a bigger world than the big world that you'd already been in. I remember and doing it's this. Unbelievable, and, and the I, music is beautiful as well. I distinctly remember in my head it being a lot more magnificent than the video. <laughs> you know, yeah, it but it's not aged time. well. It's not aged well, but but for the time, no other game had done anything on this sort of scape, scope before. It was huge and, and beautiful, and like I say, when when you've when you've been raised on games like Quake and Doom, where you're in corridors, this is amazing. Hmm. And it was a, a big moment for me. And this this Unreal was my first proper like mouse and keyboard first person shooter. This game introduced me to the whole thing. I think I'm probably there with you because I've got I've still got the disc actually a friend um, <clears throat> wrote for me when I was at college um, <laughs> uh, along with like Rocket Arena not Rocket Arena um, Red Alert I always get uh, Rocket Red Alert mixed up with Rocket Arena for some reason because um, it's RA but um, yeah I, I I remember him giving me it and I played it and I was like I, I couldn't actually get very far on it I remember I got into another facility or or building after I got out of the ship and I just couldn't get into a room or or get past a door or something and. I just didn't try for much further than that. But then again, I played loads of UT from that. So there's, there's another quick moment in this game, just a little bit further into the um, into the. I guess it's all one continuous mission, really. But you walk into a corridor. I don't have a video for this, I'm afraid. But yeah, but it's it's a great moment. You walk into a corridor, um, and you walk to the end of the corridor and turn around a corner, and there's like something blocking the corridor. You walk back, and then the other end of the corridor is blocked. A bit like what Steve's moment from uh, Fear was like. And then on the lights, start switching off one by one until it all goes dark. And then a scourge jumps out and starts kicking the shit out of you. That rings bells. It's an excellent moment. And again, yeah. cinematic. It's sort of, it's nice when games do this because because games don't do it that often. Or they certainly didn't do it that often at the time. 
it the the, the um the the novelty of when it did do it made it even better. Yeah. And Unreal's got a lot of moments like that, especially towards the start of the game. I think the start, I, I think as the game went on, they ran out of ideas. But what was the main um, story for Unreal? What was the reason for you? You are you are a prisoner. You you're a prisoner um, on a prison ship, and the prison ship <coughs> flies near a planet and intercepts some kind of um, a distress signal. The, the ship crashes on the planet, and it turns out that the scourge have been harvesting um, this Teridium crystal resource from the planet from the Nali um, who are like four armed peaceful native people yeah um, and that's basically and you've got to kill shit right so it's yeah. not that in depth really. it's not it's, quite it's yeah. not quite the magnificent plot line of Doom and Quake which is you are a man you have to kill shit some <laughs> stuff from possibly from other dimensions or another planet possibly maybe yeah. not sure if you're human or not but you're a marine what, it's about it in Quake Two. I you're, think, you're right? a yeah, uh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, Quake Two. There's in fact Quake Two. They did try and attempt to do a story. It was all about battling the Strog, wasn't it? And uh, yeah, and there was loads of voiceovers <laughs> and like uh, radio signals and stuff, wasn't there? Which I never understood. I still what, yeah. something about Renaissance tracks at the beginning. I don't know. <laughs> Renaissance tracks. That's all I remember. But <laughs> it's probably not that at all. It's probably something like. Make sure you go to the end of the level. <laughs> <Somewhere>. <laughs> it's it's a colonel ringing you up. Yeah. <laughs> Shoot the strogs. Actually, you've got a name, you know. Um, the the marine has got a name in Quake Two, and I, I, the name of the model or something. Oh God, I can't remember it. Uh, I don't think. It well, matters. I know you know it doesn't, but it was still it was one of those little. <laughs> it's actually, in fact, no, it's not. If you look behind you, look at the pod. Your name's on the pod. Right. And then all of the other pods also have names on, which is yeah, one of I those little some of them details. The, don't they have the names of the programmers and level designs? So like there's Willits Possibly, and Carmack yeah, and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And then that, that bit right at the end of, uh, I think it's Boss 2, is it? Where you can go into the the area with the like the techno music and... The tank with his bitches. Yeah, the tank with his bitches and the, yeah, uh, all the, the developer the heads. Yeah. Uh, well, right, um, has anyone else got anything on the top of the head? Because I'm going to move us on to something else otherwise. Um, nothing directly related. All right. Well, one of my, uh, I think someone else put this in there, but one of my moments uh, I particularly enjoyed doing, um, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater Two, and I think all of us, mm. all of us, had uh, <laughs> a lot of time spent on this. And this yeah. is this is a guy doing like a twenty three billion or forty eight billion combo, something ridiculous. And um, I just, I just, I, I spent so much time playing this game that I got yeah. really, really good at it. But I could never. There were some levels that were just so difficult I couldn't. I didn't. Get. I didn't play the game like in it. I didn't play the, the the campaign, if you like. I just played the individual levels and did this for it was, ages. It was the best of all of them in my experience so far. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. agree from what I've played and I, I'd still play it now it's it's still a really fun game especially with mates if you there's a, there was a tag version as well wasn't there but yeah there he goes that's 20 260 million or something ridiculous 26 million 2 Turn million in, man jesus for me, uh, anyway. this brings back memories of uh land parties at about three o'clock in the morning fuel completely on energy drinks yeah like yeah. trying to do as many combos as possible failing miserably and then passing out and having like a spasm in the corner um, talking about fun with friends. Uh, <coughs> have any of you guys played Guitar Hero? Obviously, yeah. You have? Well, not obviously, because there's, there's a lot of people that. Who hasn't played that? Have well, you played Candy Crush? No. I'll tell you one thing. The guy I'm just about to show you, he's definitely played Guitar Hero before, and he's playing the Through the Fire and Flames. In fact, I'm going to. Uh, is just... it Dragon Force? Is that? Is that Dragon Force song? Uh, yes, but he's he's getting like combos and he's still got a times four multiplier. He's just got the it's ridiculous. I bet this guy's actually a better guitarist than the guitarist in Dragon Force. It's fact, you know that the frame rate's not good enough for it to show how fast he's going. Right. Anyway, you get the idea. Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lots of people who can play guitar very well. I was talking. It's not. It's not relatable to guitar, really. Unfortunately. Uh, I no, mean, you guitar's get a, harder. You get obviously you get quite a bit of fidelity with your fingers, but yeah, it's um, 
it's still a bit much. But anyway, Guitar Hero again. I'm gonna I'm gonna call that out as a moment because I had a lot of fun playing that with friends, especially when we all nailed like a solo section together or something. Especially like the the later ones with the drum kits and um, was that Rock Band three two? They both, rock Band two? They both did it. Well, they, uh, Guitar Hero had a drum kit as well eventually, didn't it? Yeah, I actually preferred Guitar Hero's hardware, I think, to everything else. But yeah, my moments were just those moments I shared with my friends and Sam. Sam obviously spent a, a fair amount of time playing Guitar Hero with me. Yeah, we. Do you know what? Guitar Hero was one of those games that I only played with you because I, I could never really enjoy it on my own. It was fun with other people, specifically with other people. For me, it, it was only a, it was only a small small moment I wanted to share. Mm. Excuse me. I'd forgotten about that. Like, that was such a huge deal. It was sort of it got so huge and then collapsed so badly, <laughs> so quickly. Not really, yeah. There's not really much you can do with the idea, is there? There's only so far you can take. Take well, that sort of game. Just different yeah. games, and they went they went heavy on the DLC for a while. Um, all those Activision and Insomniac acts, or someone, the, the people who did that anyway. They um, they went really heavy on on DLC content like packs to do with. Yeah. Here's an entire album from a band, and then they went all heavy on the merchandise in like the Beatles and uh, Metallica and that kind of stuff. For, uh, and I, I bought the Metallica one myself. Yeah, that, that's the only way you can go, really, isn't it? Just to like going to license, and that's all you can do. Yeah, and Slash got involved as well in one of them, and he was he was modelled and probably yeah, never stopped that. his solos. Like he probably never. He has quite a lot of um, guitarists modelled in there. Doesn't Zach Wild in there? Oh yeah, but he then. Is, yeah. You had those really off-putting moments where you'd have Zach Wilde would turn up, and then you'd be playing a killer song, and you'd be like, "Zach Wilde is now playing the killers." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was really off-putting. You were like, "What?" The? Yeah, I was like, "That's a sellout." If I was Zach Wilde, and I went right contract terms, no shit music. <laughs> and yes, and yes, internet. I'm saying the killers are shit. Get your stuff. Get your get your shit together. I concur. Music. They are. They are. Why? Why are? Why are a band that are so wet called the Killers? The Killers sounds like they're going to be hard, but they're just like wet and shite. And it's meant to be ironic. Because they're killing Random music. Random flowers. That's what it is. They're killing music. That, I give them that. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to have another another quick boring one. As soon as you guys aren't chirping up. Um, no. Can't like speak over you. Yeah. Go on, Steve. You uh, you do one. Um, I don't I'm want another say, one. I want one of Steve's um, good ones. Sonic Adventure. <laughs> Sonic oh, the whale thing. Sonic, Sonic Adventure, Adventure, the whale chase. And I remember when yeah. I first got my Dreamcast, and for me, the Dreamcast was an awesome console. It was massively underrated. It was. It was called Classic, wasn't it? There was also it was. A, lot, a lot of people that agree with you there. It's not just not just us. There's a hell yeah. of a lot of people in the world that still... In fact, there's a few people that are still programming games for the Dreamcast, believe it or not. Indie developers that are focusing on it. But, uh, I mean, just like such a compact little system. Uh, the joypad itself was a fantastic layout, which I think uh, is pretty much the exact same layout that Xbox used for their joypads as well. Except it's a weird uh, shape, isn't it? It's kind of got like. It has a weird shape, but where the um, like, analog and D pad and like, button positions were is the same as the Xbox. Um, but just when I played this game for the first time and there was this much happening with the wheel bouncing in the background, it's just so, you know, you just kind of felt, oh my god, the future's here. <laughs> it, it actually turned out later in the game that it was very, very linear and you couldn't actually do that much. But for the first like ten, fifteen minutes, I was I, I, I was awestruck. Is that yeah. the first level or something at the wheel chase? Uh, yeah, the Emerald Coast was yeah. the first level. I've yeah, never, I've, I've never you, played the game, so I wouldn't. You think. can um, you can download Sonic Adventure One and Two, I think, on the well, definitely on the PSN. And I got to near the end of Sonic Adventure, but I I think it, it aged enough that I kind of got a bit annoyed with the controls, but. That first level was pretty cool. No it doubt was awesome. It. And um, a little note on hardware as well. Some of that hasn't been done since, but the uh, the VMU that came with the uh, the Dreamcast as well. Mm. That was some of that was quite special at the time because it integrated with the games, and you used to be able to collect. I forget the, uh, what what they were called on the game, but they were kind of little little creatures, and you collected mm. them and you stored them on your I've, memory card and you carried them one. around with it. Um, I've got one of them. I never used like it. <laughs> Definitely uh, riding on the wave of Tamagotchi, isn't it? Well, it was round about the same era as Tamagotchi. Yeah. I think it was just yeah, yeah. after. But uh, Sega, uh, again, in their day, were as good innovators as Nintendo, yeah. in my opinion. I, I disagree. I don't think they were as good as innovating. But, yeah, they, they obviously came up with some ideas. But then again, I'm to when I talk about Nintendo innovating, I'm talking about them. They, they put stuff <laughs> in... I keep talking about this every every show. They put, they put stuff into the gaming industry that have become staples... 
and they are consistent. They're not just gimmicks. Well, you know, there might be gimmicks at the beginning, but they've become staples. That other people have done them better, as I said. But they've put quite a few things in there that were crappy gimmicks that failed badly, like the power glove. Uh, the and power what, glove. Was, what, what was that headset? <laughs> what virtual boy. Had? Virtual, yeah, virtual, virtual boy. boy. Oh. And that was and like the, the most uncomfortable thing in the world to wear as well. It's just, just you put it on your head and you instantly started vomiting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was that as well? As um, as Moot was just uh, mentioned there in the chat as well, uh, the Dreamcast was the first console with internet access. Um, yes, it was. PlayStation yeah, yeah. PlayStation Two had internet access. It was Dreamcast came back before 2. it though. The Dreamcast was before the PlayStation. Okay, 2. so I'm saying that's the only that's the first one that I was aware of. But yeah, the, I yeah. think the Dreamcast was that. All right, I still have actually a cable, no. I did, didn't cable the, the, the Mega Drive have like um. Didn't the Mega Drive have internet connectivity? May have only been in Japan. I think the SNES did as well. I think the Dreamcast was the first one with proper mainstream internet access, but I think some of the really old consoles had uh, had uh, modems. I'll submit you on that because I'm, I'm, I'm not really sure. Yeah, I'm sure. You know, I'm sure there were Japanese only things, but I'm sure you could connect your Mega Drive to um, like Sega World or something like that in Japan. To what end? Um, you could download demos and stuff and. And, like, and store them on what? <laughs> you had no internal storage on the Mega Drive? It, I think the modem yeah. had a, its own storage. The modem had a CD writer in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you couldn't uh, even save your game on most Mega Drive games. You had to complete it in one go or pause it, have your tea and come back and finish it later. Oh, well, same with James, most James, like James Pond, I remember James Pond and it used to have these ridiculously long passwords oh. that you have to write down and they're all like pictures uh, of fish and stars and stuff it's like you couldn't that. just give me letters and numbers you had to make me draw pictures of fucking fish <laughs> well yeah. they did that they did that with a lot of older consoles like they had early copy protection you know like yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah. Um, you see you remember oh. monkey islands yeah monkey island had like this the, first, the second one did i think it had this disc and you had to line things up in four different ways or three different ways and then put the chords yeah. into the screen in the right order I remember doing ones where it, um, it'd say, right, in, in the manual, go to page six, paragraph two, the third word. Yeah, I remember that as well. Yeah, yeah I typed them in, which was an absolute pain in the ass if you lost the manual. Oh, yeah, yeah. I can top that. There was a game called Ace, I think, on the Sinclair Spectrum. It was a flight simulator. And a copy protection on that was you got this piece of plastic with some ridges in it, and it was translucent plastic, and you had to hold it up to the screen to a random pattern that it showed on the screen. And if you held it right... <laughs> It turned the pattern into some some letters and numbers that you then typed in. So you had to have this bloody piece of plastic. You had to have the TV that was the right size to, to do it properly. You had to hold it the right distance from the TV. You basically couldn't play the game. You'd load the game for 10 minutes and then see this crappy barcode on the screen and hold this piece of plastic up and... Uh, and then, then reset the computer and play something that didn't have copy protection on it. Yeah, yeah. It was like... People complain about secure ROM and, and copy protection now, but DRM yeah. back then was <laughs> evil. <laughs> it, was, it, it made you work for it. Didn't it? It, was it, like, made you, it basically meant you couldn't play the game, you even can, if you had the copy. Basically, protection. you can copy this all you want, but you ain't going to play it. You can copy it to a million discs, but unless unless you can make a million copies of the manual. Mind you, these are just blind luck. I remember once me and Lou randomly typing in a 16-digit... Uh, was it 16 <laughs> or 32-digit uh, access it, it, code? It was one of the Microsoft ones for... A, what, yeah, what, Flight like, Simulator, of, wasn't it? Yeah, was Flight Simulator. Also, earlier algorithms for CD keys and stuff, a lot of them were quite buggy, so there was a lot of um, there's a lot of times that they yeah, would... But quite buggy is, is an understatement when me and Steve smashed the keyboard and then put in a random <laughs> key, key and it worked. And well, we've had no luck ever since. <laughs> well, that was it. You used everything up on that. No, not I was like winning the lottery 15 times in a row. It was like <laughs> the odds were that much stacked against us. Yeah. Um, one I didn't quite get in last time. I did show a video of it. Um, there was two moments, actually, that I didn't get into our... Um, what was the last show about? We had weapons and then we had something else, didn't we? Uh, annoyances. Uh, annoyances. Annoyances, yeah. Two, two moments, which I can I still consider annoyances uh, one of them was the lancer from um gears of war and I, actually that all came out wrong the lancer is awesome i'm not saying it's annoy <laughs> annoyance i just didn't get a video out to, um or we didn't talk about it much because it's one of those weapons that is just cool to play with it's just is awesome the, lancer to... the chainsaw yeah. weapon? right okay yeah it's uh, th the best part of it is the fact that you can do this you can slice someone up and the entire screen becomes bloody and stuff. And it's just, it's one of those things that everybody who is playing a multiplayer match wants to do. 
And <laughs> when you do get it, that's it's Gears so of War. It's so satisfying. That is Gears of War. That is that is what I wanted from that game, and it gave it to me, and it gives it to me consistently. And every time, I never get bored of doing it. It's so <laughs> satisfying. Look at that Dom dying again. <laughs> <laughs> That was weird as well. You can play on right, these games Chris. with like you can have twelve Marcuses running around if you want. <laughs> it's really weird. Um, That's just reminded me of something, um, and it's and I haven't got a video for it because you just made me think of it right now. And I'm probably the only person that's played this series, but you know, Dead Space. Yeah, I've played Dead Space. Um, in the second one, basically, you know the basic premise: you can shoot the limbs off your baddies and with your with your gun, and you have got like a lot of them have got spiked limbs, and you've got a few powers. You've got a stasis power, which basically you can pick up objects and throw them. Um, no, no, sorry, that's kinesis, and you've got stasis, which slows down time. Yeah. So you like you throw a little t- a little time bomb at somebody, slow them down, chop their arm off, then pick up their arm, and then pin them to the wall with it. <laughs> that, like you say, that's one of those things that you just do at every given opportunity that you can. A bit like what you were saying about the chainsaw. It's like, I'm going to chainsaw him. It's the same thing in Dead Space. You're just like, I'm going to knock your arm off and shove it through your head. There, there <laughs> are certain games that, that reward you in such brilliant ways with certain weapons, but make it so it's so hard to get them. But people still try. It's like um, people trying to kill each other with, with chainsaws and, and berserk and doom. Punching people with a berserk pack and doom. If you got the berserk pack, even if you had a BFG or a rocket launcher, you would forsake them all in favour of trying to punch people in the face. Yeah. Well, that's good when you find something that works <laughs> and something that's really satisfying as a player. It's. I think that's what that. I said if the Lancer wasn't in Gears of War, I don't think I'd have enjoyed it as much. Because it really it def- did. Uh, it, it definitely added an element to it, and it was going to just that. When the opportunity presented itself and you managed to pull it off, it was just like, it was one of these where you turned around and was like, oh, no, no one saw that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was just so satisfying. You just hear occasionally over the mic, you'd hear someone go, yeah, boy! <laughs> this, this, this is why teabagging is so prevalent now. Because yeah. you can just keep doing it until someone looks. <laughs> yeah. He's not happy, this um, dude, is he? I've forgotten his name. Is this Dead Space is on at the moment? Dead Space 2, this. Yeah, I, 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 think, not, I um, expected to be more sci-fi, but isn't a big bloody gothic it, cathedral? It, by the looks it of is it. pretty sci-fi. Yeah, this is this is one of the the bits where you, it's a change in scenery from all the sci-fi stuff done deliberately. So yeah, this is like an, an atypical selection of the game, really. Right. W- was that a, um, a puker or whatever it's called? Yeah, this is actually showing the thing that I was talking about particularly. Um, it's got the basic idea, but it's not the exact thing I'm talking about. Yeah, I, I, which I, I, when I you try. chop someone's you chop someone's arm off and throw it back at them, so you kill them with their own spike arm. Thingy, try, it just feels good. I tried Mo- to find something, but Moot in the um, chat has mentioned the gravity gun from Half Life, um, and I, th- I I think that um, Sam should talk about this, and we should put the video on that we we did mention this a few episodes back about the super gravity gun. Yeah, and I, I I've. I got a video for it there. I think Sam, you should uh, have the honour of talking about this because. Well, I, I might have said something about this when we talked about the gravity gun in general, and if I repeat myself, then I apologise. But so you get into the um, the big tower with Breen's tower, the the big combine tower thing, and you go in and you get all your weapons taken off you, and they're all in front of you, aren't they? Yeah. And then they all get disintegrated, and you're like, oh shit, <laughs> like. Um, I know. I'm at the, near the end of the game. You've taken all the stuff off me. Things are going to go very, very bad from here on out. And if and it's still difficult. The end of the game is still quite difficult. But mm. the exact opposite of that happens. You get the best weapon, possibly. Well, arguably for me in any game ever, in terms of how much fun it is. Yeah. Um, your gravity gun, which has been this a tool. You've not. I mean, you can use it as a weapon and you know throw the blades at the zombies and things like that. But it. It goes blue, which is cool. Obviously, look, it just looks cool straight away. You're like, hello, what's all this then? <laughs> then? You pick it up and it basically just can destroy everything. Anything that you pick up becomes like electrocharged or whatever the, the thing is that's happened. And then when you pick a human up and fire them at another human, that electrocharge carries on and you just pick up guys, throw them at other guys and just see this massive... I don't know what you call it, just a massive ripple effect where everything's just everything's just getting electrocuted, going bam, 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 bam. It's just yeah. amazingly good fun. I, th- I think that it's the the moment as well. It's just it's so beautifully done in the way that it's it's doing that typical game trope thing of taking all your weapons off you. And it's like, oh shit, right, so I've collected all my weapons. Or even worse when it does at the start of a game where it gives you the best weapon at the start of the game and then takes it off you five minutes later. Mm. 
But it's doing it at the end of the game, and you think, all oh, right, so I'm going to have to do the final mission by jumping on books or something. Mm. And then there's just, you look on the floor, and there's this blue gravity gun. And you, you, it, it's so, uh, the orange color is so iconic in the whole Half Life series that to see something that is so iconically orange turn blue is just cool in itself. It's like this, this is significant. Yeah, you think, know, something yeah. big's changed. I think I must have slept through the entire ending of all of the Half Life games because I can't remember <laughs> that at all. And I know really? I def- definitely is... completed Half Life Two. Uh, Half Life Two's got some brilliant moments. It's full of moments. It is a game of moments. Yes. But that is like the, I think that's a topper for me. I think it's absolutely amazing. I think Valve yeah, I in particular are very good at moments though, because if you look at um, uh, if you look at something like Portal Portal Two, or well, Portal Two specifically has got a lot more. Um, interesting parts in it you know there's a lot of things that go on there's a lot of ideas in there that are i don't know that make the game again the glados is a potato you know she, mm. she's brilliant anyway i'm showing uh, raven home again we did uh, yeah. show this uh on the weapons one i think it's not the same video but um yeah it's it, again it was another moment in half-life where it just changed the mood of the game entirely didn't it and the entire mm. section was a lot bleaker and a lot darker than the rest of the game, and the rest of it's quite action based, really, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, and this this is a horror sequence, isn't it? And it's it's really well done as well. I mean, I guess, I guess you can kind of see that at some point someone at Valve thought we want to do a cool zombie game, but we don't know how we can fit this in around the stuff we're doing with Half Life. Hang on, let's just do like a zombie sequence in Half Life. Yeah, that'll yeah. work, and it does work. It works really <clears throat> well. And F- uh, Father Gregory Gregory is a Good yeah, character yeah. as well, but we'll talk about him in characters. The worst um, thing yeah, about, um, um, about Half Life Two were those, uh, you know, the black head crabs, the one that made like a the <laughs> fast crabs. Yeah, yeah. That they came. Oh no, 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 no the black ones were the fast ones. The, the, the black ones were those poison ones, weren't they? They dropped your health yeah. down to one. Down to one in one yeah. hit, but they made that like almost like a rattlesnake noise when they were near yeah. you. I used they used to freak me out. They scared me, those things, because they were little, and you're just like, where is it? Oh, God, let me kill it before it gets me. And they were black and shiny, and they could hide anywhere. Yeah, yeah. I didn't I didn't like the fast zombies, the things that scream and jump across rooftops at you and stuff. Yeah. God, there's a, there's a, there's a subject for a show. Um, zombies. Maybe do it on the... No, zombies. <laughs> well, we were, to, we were actually saying we might do a zombie-specific show. For Halloween, we should do a zombie special. Yeah, why not? Or maybe, not? Uh, maybe an, an enemies one as well, just in general. That, yeah, that was what I was going to say. We'd, if we ah. do like a uh, types of enemies, because there's obviously when you talk about COD and that, there's the different types in terms of grenadiers and then you know support people and that. But that's that's not what we're talking about. I'm talking about different enemies in games. I think it's a right. good I one. We're going to talk about different types of COD. I was going to say like you know battered, <laughs> bad, <smoked. laughs> bad. Bad. poached in milk. You idiot. <laughs> right, um, um bit of uh, bit of retro stuff or, or rather yeah. retro um kind of throwback stuff. Um one game in particular <coughs> well, apart from Metal Gear Solid 4, um there is which I'm gonna show you in a minute anyway, I think that's one of my moments. Um Super Mario Galaxy Two has this moment in it where you go to a galaxy and it's called the Throwback Galaxy, and uh, you play in one of the N64 Mario Mario 64 levels, uh, have you guys have any of you guys played it? Cause I can't remember if I've you guys played, played, played any Mario games. Galaxy the original all the way through. I've got Super Mario Galaxy two, but I think I've only played it for a few hours. Um, I played a bit I've, of Super Mario Galaxy. Like I played the first couple of levels of it. I think. Well, this is two, and it's basically a, a replica of um, I've forgotten the name of it. Want uh, uh, Fortress or yeah, something? Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's like a replica of it. It's very, very accurate as well. Even you know, all the little secrets are there. But there's a few little differences. But it's just really cool. It's one of those moments again as a fan of a series. And I'm again referring back to the Metal Gear Solid stuff that I was talking about before. It's nice that developers, even though it might be a lazy cop out, I think I like it. I like the fact that they're starting to throw old levels in there with the new mechanics without mm. rewriting the entire game. You know, I like that. I like it's a it's a homage to the fans. I think. Homage to the fans. Homage. A little bit of uh, a, a tip right of the hat, shall we it say? It is. Yeah, it's a, it's a <laughs> nod in the right direction. Um, um, it's go on off topic a little bit. I've got an idea. Go on. Uh, I think Chris should uh, should donate a pound every time he says Metal Gear Solid. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I do. Uh, yes. Only because I think you've said it. Do it as well. I think you should donate a penny, and we'd sell plenty of money. <laughs> uh, 
all right from from <laughs> now on i've got i've got i've got way too many things on to keep count of that i'm afraid too busy this is oh, a guy with 60 lives this is the problem with zelda um with old um mario games you end up with a million lives on each playthrough but you don't save them when you save your game you come back into the game with three lives or whatever it is and then you have to get all 90 lives again. So the longer you play, the more lives you got. And then you've got people telling you off for playing too long in the actual games themselves. Can I can I go can I go even more retro? And yeah. I, I didn't put this one down, but I think you put this down. But I think most of us no, not that that, that doesn't have any moments. Oh look, what? it's a white paddle. Yeah. Oh the ball's coming towards me. It's going away. Oh, it's coming towards me. Yeah, the game I want to talk about is Cannon Fodder on the Amiga. Uh, I think Chris, you put this one down. Nope. Awesome. No, was it Steve? All right, okay. Yeah. The intro disc um, on Cannon Fodder. The game sings. This is, a, you know, what we're used to in, in consoles and computers and stuff was BP music, three channels, square waves. But the game sings. It shall, sings shall an entire the, song. Should we put some music on for this? I yes. think we need to hear it, yeah, because this is just unbelievable. And it also had something approaching photographs on it. Yeah, yeah. But uh, the entire intro was on one full disc. You could, could uh, discard the first disc and just put the second disc in and start playing the game. But it was worth it just to watch the intro. Have you seen this, Sam? I, I, I this sounds familiar. That little uh, this game is not endorsed by the British Legion as an encouraging start. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there we are. <laughs> is that is that like the? Like a That's... MIDI chip or something doing that all. No, it's, it's the, tracking. The, yeah, it's it? the, Amiga, the Amiga's got four channel um, wave PCM sound. So it's just tracker music, Pro Tracker, I think. Uh, possibly not actually, given this game. But yeah, it's um, just just to have a game actually singing lyrics to you and a full song that's, that's, uh, that's legible. Because you used to, I mean, you get sound in games, you get maybe. There's um, Fantasy World Dizzy. The start of that, it go, and that was it. That was the whole, all of the speaking in the entire game. And you could barely hear what the hell he was talking about. Hmm. But this song, a song to you <laughs> with lyrics and like passages and. And it lasted for what about a minute and a half, two minutes. Yeah, it's just, it's just. I mean, I know I'm getting really excited about the fact that there's a game with audio in it, but you've got to think at, at the, the time. time yeah, at the time it was just beepy music. You wouldn't get anything even approaching speaking in any game. I think Valhalla came on something twelve discs, and that the guy talked to you on that. But this was the this was kind of genesis for that. That was a, a, a song. Yeah. It was amazing. It was really I mean, despite really the amazing. fact that unfortunately, the intro... oh, sorry, yeah, so, sorry. Unfortunately, the guy Richard Joseph, whose name just came up, um, recently passed away as well. So that's kind of it, it's it's. It's an old game. This is 93, I think, maybe. Um, when you say first disc, then, right? I played this on the Amiga. Yep. Yeah, that's what I had it on. There's an so intro disc, which you can skip just entirely. Intro, it's just an intro disc, so you put it yeah. in. And the game was two discs long. The entire first disc was used on the intro, which was actually bigger than the entire game itself. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> but, I, didn't uh, I didn't know that fact. Fantastic. I said I played it on a friend's Amiga, so I, I didn't. I didn't own the discs or anything. Yeah. I don't know how they, we... they, also, they also repeated the, um, the, <clears throat> the, the, the the music thing over the Cannon Fodder 2. It wasn't as good a tune, but yeah. um, and it wasn't as impressive in the fact that like your Amiga was singing to you, but it's still, I think, in terms of a game of moment, I remember being blown away by that intro. Yeah, the impact when you first put it, it was like, what? That, it, it's, 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 it's singing, it's singing! It's singing, and I, there's photos on the screen and everything! I played that game a lot, and there's speech in it as well, isn't there? In the actual game. There is, yeah, yeah. Um, there's also one of the best pieces of music ever, which is the... Um, uh, the menu music. The, the menu music, which is unbelievable. It's man awesome. music, as you once called it, Steve. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> man music. Uh, I did play a lot of cannon fodder, but I, d I don't remember. The, I don't remember the intro disc having a particular impact on do, me. Uh, do sensible software still exist and on the rights? Because no one's trying to do a remake of. Uh, they have, they have actually. They recently they? did one. Yeah. Really? Yeah, it's not very good. It wasn't very well received either. But it was a very recent um, remake of the game. Was it by kind of the original developers? Or? Some of them, I think. Uh, I'm just trying to find it now. Bloody hell. Oh yeah, uh, the so, 
such yeah. a fun game. Cannon Fodder 3 hit Steam, so it's on Steam. Oh, it's not yeah. a remake then, it's just a new it, one. It's, new it's a new it. one by, yeah. By? By, um, by Burut CT. Codemasters as well. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, they must have the rights to it now. Fair enough. 2012 um, that came out. Oh, God. I so that we've, we've mentioned um, we've mentioned Bioshock a number of times in our in our shows because it is one of those it's one of those games that has a lot in it. Um, mm. We've got a, a, quite a few moments from uh, Bioshock here to show. One was uh, becoming a big daddy, uh, which if you haven't played the game, I've just spoiled the end for you. Yeah, well. <laughs> you know, oh, well. it's not the only game that's been spoiled today. Oh no, definitely not. Um, uh, yeah, but when you when you became a big daddy, you had to run around a level for a little bit whilst being kind of taunted by is it Frank Fontaine or something? Is he your helper? I can't remember yeah. which one's which. There you go, Frank Fontaine. I don't know if he's the, your helper or he's the. Uh, it's Atlas. Atlas is the guy. He's like the Irish guy talking to you. Um, but yeah, well, you have to go around the, the level and collect different different parts of the the costume before you can actually become the big daddy and then the when you become the big daddy you've got the drill and you've got a rivet or you've have you got a rivet gun i can't remember which you, one it you is you don't you no you don't you think of the second game you don't have any of the weapons than the ones you've got normally in the game you don't have the drill or anything like that you just All have right. the outfit is that bioshock 2 where you get the uh, the drill and the rivet bioshock well, 2 big, is where yeah. you are a big you're, daddy aren't you you're a dig baggy yeah, yeah. D- dig baggy yeah. <laughs> dig baggy, dig baggy. <laughs> But it was. I thought that moment. That was one of those moments that gave me chills as a person who particularly loved the game all the way through. And it was one of those that I couldn't stop playing when I started playing it. Uh, and it was. It was really cool that you could become. I love that kind of stuff though. When you can in games where you can become something from the game world that you aren't normally in the game. You know, you're just a normal human. But it's really cool that, that happened. I There's also a bit like in put this. on big metal suits, don't you? That's what it is. You get like a weird fetish. There's like also some people like leather. You like metal. There's a moment in this, I'm not sure if it's coming up or not, um, where you, you go up to like a, a voice box modification machine and it's got it's got like this thing, it, it looks like some crazy looks, torture equipment. It looks horrible, doesn't yeah. it? It's like a big spiky saw type thing you shove it, down your throat. Yeah, basically it grabs you, uh, it, it's supposed to grab someone, lock them in place and then stick this like... This thing that twists into the throat to vod- its like oh, oh. <laughs> Look at it. It's cut somewhere in the in the the end bit of the game. It's quite <laughs> yeah, again yeah. the amount of detail that they put into that particular moment. That this is where the big daddies are created, or this is where we convert people or splicers into big daddies. You know, this is the it, it, the amount of detail was was tremendous. I think, and Bioshock's good for that all round. I think. Um, I... Go on, Sam. I was going to say, they actually did a better job of implementing all that stuff and making it fit with the story than they did in uh, Infinite. Infinite felt like it was, they, they had a world and then they had to make that world fit into a Bioshock game a little bit. Like the the the, va- the figures are in it, are cool and all, but they don't really serve a story purpose other than you expect to have them in a, in a Bioshock game. Whereas in this, they're an integral part of the story. In the first one, they're a big part of what the whole of the Rap- City of Rapture is about, the uh, the plasmids. Well, and another moment someone's put down was entering Rapture itself. I'm playing that now. Uh, mm. And again, that was, uh, again, right at the beginning of the game after, is it a plane crash? Yeah. Something like I, that. I, I, you wanna, I, you wanna, yeah, you, you wash up on a lighthouse or something and you go down into a Rapture. Yeah, you, well, you actually yeah. wash up. Well, you don't wash up anyway. You, you come up, <coughs> up where there's loads of flames around you and then you have to swim to the lighthouse. Mm. But yeah. yeah, yeah, similar kind of thing. And then you go down to this, um, this like, bell diving to lift, but it feels like a, like a bell diver capsule of some sort and uh, end up here and there it's again it was one of those i know it's a fairly recent game so it's not one of those um it's not one of those games where you're like wow i can't believe they can do this now you know because it already already been done but it was really well done i think it felt good that the music the introduction you were getting the fact that you could look at screens in the yeah. in the bell in the bell compartment it kind well. of um it put me in mind of uh, the intro to the uh, the original half life where you're on the train <sighs> journey I was just thinking of that. I was just thinking. I was thinking, uh, why did I forget that one? The intro to Half Life One is amazing. It could be boring. It should be boring, but it is not. It's absolutely amazing. The 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 whole atmosphere, everything. It, uh, 
Sorry, well, Steve, I'm, I'm stealing from you. But no, 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 go ahead. You obviously feel very strongly about it. <laughs> I do. I love it. I, I could play that bit. I enjoy that bit more than the game itself in some respects. Just because it, it all of the attention to detail, you're looking around and you're seeing things going on and there's like there's the, the big big loader machines and stuff like that and you see the, the toxic waste and the it's just the, yeah uh, the guard the, the guard hear, knocking on the you door can hear and stuff people doing things and that's it's again it's setting the ambience of the world and it's like a normal high security facility that is just about to go to shit and you know that playing you know you're playing yeah. a computer game and you can walk yeah. around as well it's a cut scene that you can walk around in you know and yeah, i think you, it was you, one of the first examples of that it's restricted to the train itself, which again they don't do these days. These days, cutscenes happen quite often anyway, and you can walk around and run away from the person that you're talking yeah. to and things like that. For me, it was uh, it was that feeling that there was a world going on around you uh, without your input. So there was these people. I mean, I know it was all scripted, but when you play through the first time, it's like um, sorry, like Lou said, the guards on the conversations, the loader walking around. It's like there is a functional oh, world there, and you're loader. just going through it. You know, when I saw that loader, I thought, oh my god, am I going to be able to play in that at some point? That'll be awesome. It's coming up, isn't it, in this... Uh... I think uh, we just passed it. You stop in an area no, that was and a walk through. Mm. Yeah, you stop and it changes the track, and when you look down, there's a loader walking out of a big door carrying some crates. Yeah, we'll see that in a minute, it's I think. It's just... It, it, it's a magnificent intro, and it, it serves a purpose to the game as well, in that it shows you the credits. Yeah. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. It's cinematic, again... It, uh, this is a bit with the helicopter actually when you come outside for a bit. Got those textures. Um, and the light mm. coming through the cracks in the in the walls and stuff. It's just it is really <clears throat> beautifully done. And if you I don't think any of you have played this, but there's um there's a remake mm. of Half Life called Black Mesa Source. I've got it. Sure? Right? It recreates it, yeah. this and they recreate it very, very well. Very, very well indeed. They basically do it in a source engine, do it really up to date with new graphics and stuff. It looks fantastic. Yeah. It was, it, yeah, I do remember playing this and thinking... It's the this fact is that you can miss game. things. It's the fact that you can actually... You can be riding around in the in the, the train and there can be things happening on both sides of the train. It's like, what do I look at? Uh, oh, look at again, that, look, look at that. It's because you're, di- uh, you're the director and it's one of those, again, it's... As I said, it's it's good that they do that the, a lot these days and the fact that it makes a game a little bit more replayable, that there are things that you can miss when cutscenes are going on. You're not... The director isn't saying, look here... You know, mm. even though you can still still miss things if it's a single frame, but you know. Yeah, anyway. I think Half Life did that. In, I think when they took the stance that Half Life will never be told from outside of Gordon's eyes, they stuck to it rigorously, and the game was so good because of that. It really helped with the immersion of the whole thing. It did, yeah. It, it, well, it's good. It's good. It, it that. That really does help. I'm not so keen on the silent protagonist bit though, because you do get a you do get a sense that what who, like I know Gordon Freeman is us and all that kind of stuff, but <laughs> he's, he's still a man in a world. Like when you're not playing the game anymore, there's still a life that goes on. Like he did, he did, he was involved in this experiment, and he has nothing to say about it all going wrong or everyone dying. Do you I know think, what I mean? That is a bit weird. I think if you give a protagonist a name, you should give them a voice as well. Hmm. Personally, I'm I'm with you there. If you give a I, like, I'm, again, I'm looking at things like Far Cry Three, where the guy has a voice, he's got a name, he's he's got opinions. But he's a I'm whiny not, prick. He is a whiny prick, but <laughs> yeah, he's he still, he's still. I think that's good. I, I prefer to do that because I like, even though they're kind of telling me what to think and what to do, and it's it's used as a narrative, uh, an exposition kind of device at some some point, uh, at a lot of points actually. It's still. I don't know, it gives it more character, it gives the game more character, I think, it gives it more investment. Yeah, a good example of, of them doing that sort of cutscene thing is actually, um, like I just had a go at it a minute ago, but Bioshock Infinite does that very well with Book of DeWitt. Now, their cutscenes are all done in that first person thing as well, it's all done from his point of view, but he reacts to them and he, he says things and has reactions to the stuff that's going on rather than all the reactions being from me. He has his own opinions on stuff, which might be different to my own. And I feel more like you're getting into playing a character a little bit more when that happens. I'm not having a good... Because I love like Half-Life. I haven't really played Half-Life, <laughs> but I played Half-Life 2. And I do love it. I just think the silent protagonist, not so much. It's much more obvious in Half-Life 2 because there's so much more dialogue. 
you get to this weird un- uncanny situation where characters are talking directly at you and expecting an answer and then they have to do some filler dialogue to make it so that he, oh, like Alex says oh right you're a silent type then and then starts yeah. assuming loads of things about you and it gets a bit weird yeah. because there's not many characters you interact with in the original Half-Life just scientists who all already know you and don't need you to speak to them it doesn't jar as much no well I'm going to spoil something for Lou now and I think I've already spoiled it for him uh, previous to uh, previous to this I think show. I know what this is because um, you're playing it aren't you Red Dead I am. Redemption I am I'm still playing it yeah I, got, I, I bought it I got it for 8 quid it's, it's well worth it even if you know what's going to happen at the end now I've um, got it for the 360 but I've never played more than a couple of hours for, uh, uh, on it I've got it for 360 as well and I've completed it to death um, a number of times because it's I don't know it's just such a good game and yeah, I me really too. enjoyed it um, anyway one of the moments in the game uh, there's a lot of again moments but one of the main moments in the game is right at the end uh, with what happens to the main uh, protagonist if you don't want the end of Red Dead, Red Dead Redemption to be spoiled please turn off your Twitch stream now I'll hold a finger up in fact someone else hold a finger up because I need to I need to navigate between here. Right, so at the end of uh, Red Dead Redemption, you die. The guy that you play dies all the way through it. Um, he's called John's Ma- John Marston, and he's a, he's a badass, basically. But he's a particularly ambiguous badass, uh, I would say. Um, and right at the end, you've obviously built up this character, and you've built up these relations with your family or rather your family have been absent for most of the game and then they come back right towards the end um, and then en- what what ends up happening is you get like a last stand and that last stand is again all of the people that they're talking about throughout the game come and basically shoot you <laughs> um, but it, it's a particularly emotional moment and that's why I'm that's why I'm bringing it up because it's it's one of those that did a really they did a really good job of it they did a really good job of the game in general but the the actual final bit it was don't know. I felt I felt pretty sad. Yeah, when it, it happened. was it was quite resonant, and also I mean I think Lou had said in that document we were talking about it that he got the feeling it might end that way, and I did as well. But when you actually get to the moment, you find yourself really, really wishing that they don't. You get there and you're like, please don't do this. You're there going like, don't I don't want him to die like this, and you you can see like he sort of gets ready and he's accepted it, but I felt that I hadn't. I was like, don't. yeah, yeah. Don't do this. Don't and you make... go out there, and then you basically get this opportunity to take down as oh, many of them as you can yeah. before they get you. And you look for the main guy. I was looking for the main bad guy's face in the crowd to try and kill him, and you can't. And then this happens, and it's brutal as well. It's it not very nice. Brutal. Uh, it's it's totally uncalled for. I think. <laughs> totally uncalled for. Considering <laughs> he's he's an all right guy as well. He's he's a good character. Again, this um this is a, another thing. He was, he's a particularly interesting character to play. I think as well. Mm. He had Did a I lot just of... see an achievement pop up there? Yeah, no, no that was, was someone no, coming was somebody online standing on PS3. I was going to say that would be the worst. Oh, that would be an awful time. <laughs> oh, achievement no, unlocked. John Martin you have died. Shot in the face. No, that's exactly what they do at the end of console games. They give you an achievement for completing it, and you get fifty. G or whatever, you know, on the Xbox, you get the most you can get for that game, unless it's a particularly cool secret you've found. Big, something. Big, uh, big Sun chat has chimed in with it. It's bang out of order, Chris. It is. You should fight to your MP. Bang out of order. It's just like, and they just walk <laughs> off and fucking leave him. Look, look. Sorry for the yeah. It is. It's a, it's a really. They, they do it in such a cold way. They're, they're just such bastards, aren't they? Yeah. Well, you know, times were harsh in the Wild West. But you spend. Um, you spend the last portion of the game playing as um, Jack, uh, playing as his son. Um, anyway, that's all I'm going to spoil for it. On a slightly more light-hearted <laughs> note, to do with the same game, um, I've lost, uh, I've lost me tab. Sorry, sorry, guys, you're gonna. I was yeah. going to say to Biggs in chat, no, ostensibly no, that will not be one of Chris's deaths. From <laughs> What's he saying, Lou? <laughs> he's, he's, he's asking if that counts as another one pound to charity. <laughs> um, <laughs> Metal Gear doesn't count. 
<laughs> if we now, did this, I'd be living on the streets by tomorrow. This this is a bit <laughs> of gameplay, um, and it, this guy's just shooting a horse, so he doesn't kill the the guy. He's just done a, a a quest. One of the main like repetitive quests in the game is that you can go and get bounties, and he's just shot the guy's horse. Now the guy's running away, and he's just about to get his lasso out. And this is uh, the moment. The lasso physics in this game are amazing. <laughs> and it's so much fun doing this. You can just run around towns and lasso people and hog tie them and and take them off on horses just for fun. <laughs> I, I think. Sorry, I think a lot of the reason that I've struggled to get into these games is because I find it really hard to do this stuff. I, I couldn't lasso anything for shit. I spent half an hour trying to lasso the horse in the tutorial mission. I couldn't do it. I think it might be one of these scenarios where it's easier Mate, with a joypad. I tell you, you want to. That's how I was using the joypad. If you think if you think the control system for this is bad, you want to try and play Metal Gear Solid. Honestly, and then you know why <laughs> I die so much on it. <laughs> What's great is when you get to lasso somebody when you're on horseback and you just drag them around. Oh, that is mental. Oh, it's as well. so good. It is hard to lasso occasionally, but it does it does work. You know, it's it's a, it's a I, good I mechanic. It, the game was telling me about five or six times to go back and see the guy. Because I was getting too far away, because I was chasing these horses into Mexico with well, Masu. Again, there are there are ways to yeah the tutorials I think are a bit unforgiving sometimes because there's it had uh, random events in this as well didn't it? Yeah. Did didn't you it? have aim assist on Lou at all? Because the lasso when you're sort of near the target it will sort of I couldn't stack let go of it. A bit. I I couldn't work out how to let go of it. The the thing is the game kind of tells you to how to do something really quickly in the in the heat of the moment. And then it disappears, and you're left wondering what the hell you're supposed to do. Like I, I had a, I had a quick draw contest with the guy in the town, the first town, and I just got shot in the face because I didn't know what to do. <laughs> That's I quite common in Rockstar games, actually. They have their little tutorials pop up in the left hand corner of the screen, and then go away before you've had a chance to read them. Yeah. That's quite common in a lot of their games, actually. Yeah, I, I found that in GTA. In fact, I played entire GTA games without knowing a particular, like one of the mechanics. I can't think off the top of my head what, but I have definitely done it. And. Uh, a, by the time the end of the game comes up, you're like, oh, really? I can press up and it'll do that. Oh, that would have made my entire game easier. <laughs> but let's not get a game in annoyances. No, 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 it's not an annoying. It's 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 just... It's just a thing. It just happened. <laughs> um, but yeah, so Red Dead Redemption, I say it's got a lot of moments. Um, another particular moment for me, anyway, was playing poker for hours and hours and hours. Sounds a bit uh. daft as a moment, but I thoroughly enjoyed it and I thought it was a good implementation of a poker game. Um, not to mention as well, of course, you can uh, you can have different types of games uh, of poker. There was like the high stakes one, which is what I'm showing at the moment, where you got a lot more money for it, and you could, you know, I don't know. I just liked it. I played a lot of it in the game. In fact, every time Sal used to walk in the room, uh, she'd see me playing poker, and she'd go, "Are you playing a poker game? I thought you were playing that cowboy game." It's like, no. It's like I'm playing a poker game within the cowboy game. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Pokerception. Yeah, a game within a game. <coughs> but yeah, I, I liked Chris. it. Um, no, it is just a game in a game. I'm afraid it's not even a game in a game. It's a, it's a mini game. game in a game. I, yeah. I think I preferred golf in Grand Theft Auto Five because I, if if at any point I got bored, I could just twat someone with a golf club. <laughs> there is that, yeah. Or, or nick someone's um, buggy and try and escape badly. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I thought I just wanted to get that one out there. Very Can quickly. I just pick one that I want to get in before? before we finish and it's only a little moment but it's from the first Resident Evil um, oh, now no, I'm no, guessing no, we've all yeah. played this game yeah yeah I played yeah. that bit yeah yep. um, so I was going to give you a little, again I like to give a little bit of context to these moments because it, it, it does affect how the moment affects you so I was uh, what I think I was 10 years old when this game came out or when I first played it my mate bought a copy of it or rented it I can't remember and we went around to, it, I went around to his house and we put it on and we were like ugh it's like a 15, it's got zombies in it, it's blood in it. You know, it's proper horror game. I've never played one before. And you're walking around and you see the first couple of zombies and then you get to this room and you're just sort of walking along, da 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 and you think it's all going to be fine. And it, it just isn't because these dogs jumped through the window and it made me cack my pants <laughs> the first time it happened. And you watch it now and it's like so silly and cheesy, but it was... It was incredibly effective jump scare when it first happened. Resident and the music Evil. kicks in. Uh! Resident <laughs> Evil um, 2 was the one that scared me more. Uh, personally, I, there was a few moments in that that had those kind of jumpy moments. That dog doesn't want to die, does it? They take it's a, a lot of bullets. Dog, um, yeah, just like that moment. And it, it, 
I remember staying up until like one in the morning playing that game and didn't, still didn't get past the mansion bit of it. <laughs> um, I said uh, on the subject of Resident Evil, my uh, uh, my I said my my favorite one of the franchise, and I haven't played all of them. I've played one, two, four, and another one. Nemesis was it? Nemesis. The third one was called Nemesis. Yeah. Oh, okay. I played them all then, <laughs> apart from five and six. Is it four that I've replayed recently? I can't remember what I. Yeah, you told me you told me you were playing four. And didn't like the camera angle or something. No, I didn't. I, I did not like it. But I mean, Resident Evil One and Two. That again, they were just them old classic games that you wanted to play when you you were younger. Mm. But two, there was two moments. Uh, the liquor. The first time you see the liquor. Yeah. Uh, and it's on the ceiling, and there's it's really ambient. There's like drips coming off the ceiling, and then you see it, and then it comes down and fights you. Um, I. Yeah, I, I found that pretty eerie. It's again akin to your uh, akin to your first. I think I might have played two first, you know, before I played one. Possibly it was um, two was a lot more successful. It, it it one was like a game that came out and got buzz, and then two was like a big like a triple A release sort of thing when it came out. It was a big deal. It was a big advertising campaign. Yeah, George I mean, Romero even did an advert for it. You know, did it a, directed a commercial. This just this just freaked me out. I think. Uh. Mm. Are her um, are her trousers or the shorts entirely appropriate for this sort of thing? He wears short shorts. No, but no, she didn't no. know it was going to happen. She just she came yeah. into town on a bike, and then all this happened. I'm going to wear my oh, zombie right. shorts today. Anyway, yeah, it's it, it the, again the sounds that it makes as well really make a, a yeah. difference to it. Uh, it's one, still wiggling. On the outside. It's still one wiggling. Of, one of the uh, the other ones, the other moments, and and this genuinely made me shit my pants when I, when it happened was uh, when Nemesis. Well, Nemesis does this a number of tyrant, is it? Not Nemesis. Mr. X, I think he's called in this. Mr. One. X, um, he does this a number of times, oh. but this this one particular moment um, is where he you do a puzzle. It's really quiet. There's hardly any music. You spend a while trying to figure out how to do the puzzle. It's only a simple one. I think you have to turn a few things or put things in in certain order or something. Mm. But then, also, just quickly, this is in scenario B. So you've already done this puzzle in scenario A, and nothing bad happens. So you're quite, you quite, you thought, I'll do the, I'll do this puzzle again. Oh, that's and then, even better. Yeah, that's even so better. You I forgot you're not, about that. You're really not expecting it because you've already done this puzzle in scenario A, and then, <laughs> <laughs> and he rocks the audio really, really slowly, and it's like he's not probably not going to get me. You know, I could probably outrun him, but. Oh my god! I'm. I've just. You've just experienced this massive shock, and you're like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but anyway, that 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 moment I remember distinctly. I I jumped out of my clothes. It was, it was horrible. <laughs> and you look at these now. You look at them now, and obviously I knew it was coming, but it just doesn't have the same effect now, does it? You know. Another game that had a similar sort of effect <clears throat> um, to that on me was um, the original Tomb Raider. Yeah. Uh, when you encountered the T-Rex. Yeah. To me, that just struck fear into my heart to the point where I was really anxious about actually trying to... Obviously, the first time I encountered it, I died quite quite dismally. Um, and then I, I went for a little break and I actually didn't want to play it again because I felt that anxious about encountering it again. You know, I didn't play the first Tomb Raider. Dare really? I say that? Um, no, sorry, I got it on PC well after it had come out, you know. Um but again, I, I didn't get on with it. Maybe it was the controls. I don't think I had a control pad at the time. He was quite, yeah. Was on PC especially, I think the controls were terrible. Terrible. <coughs> yeah, this, this the, um, isn't the T-Rex not a mandatory part doing? of the game, though? Doing backflips. Isn't it, like a, isn't it like a secret area the T-Rex is in? No, no, like it's, it's no, a, no. no it's, it's a main part of the game. Like, you're in a big it's, valley. Uh, the Lost Valley. And then, and then you don't you don't punch it like Lara just tried to there because that's what happens here. You get destroyed. Oh, look at it! It's not happy, is it? It's it's been stuck down there for sixty five million years. I was just going to say, how the hell has it lived this long? <laughs> just this, one, this clearly isn't um, a let's play, is it, or a speed run? This this is a You're just such get... an elitist. Stop going around let's... everyone having to be as good as speed runners. God <laughs> sake. But do not. The it's enjoyment deep. comes in all forms. It's not yeah, just Yeah, but my enjoyment how... comes from not watching people die a million times. They my enjoyment comes from watching you die. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, there's one on this list that I've never actually experienced myself, but I kind of want to see. 
and that's uh, blowing up Megaton in, uh, in oh. Fallout 3. Oh, yeah. Well, because I'm such a goody oh. two-shoes, um, I never actually made that decision. Yeah. Me I, I've um, never seen what happens. I played the game um, the first time through, and I did everything like a good guy, you know, and I, I, I always do that in games, generally. And, um, yeah... I played through it and did a save thing, saved it, and then, and then, decided to try it just to see what it was like. Because I was thinking, this is going to be an atom bomb. This is going to be pretty impressive, isn't it? That's, and that's cool. I think it is. I'll be honest with you. I love the fact that the um, the players were <laughs> wearing a nice karma. dress. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you you should wear some did. evening wear for this nuclear because, explosion. Because this uh, this save was um, wasn't one I was going to continue. You know what I did immediately after I blew Megaton up. I just went around and stabbed everybody in that building. <laughs> shot shot everybody, all of the bad Dethonic. guys. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, right. You've done, and then I went back to Megaton. And you know, have you been back after the explosion? No, I've never blew the place up. Okay, so when yeah, you go yeah. back afterwards, everyone's a ghoul. Everyone's like a radioactive ghoul. Um, Not and, everyone's a ghoul. Some of them are just dead. Yeah, oh, okay. <laughs> the, the, you know, the annoy there's an annoying um, woman in there who's um, she she's just got like this like a, a, like fairy kind of ma you know she's she's oh, not but, quite there. Is it the wasteland survival guide woman, the one Poss who sends you on the quest for the yeah, wasteland? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I know which one you mean. Yeah. But yeah, so I mean, it was um, yeah the megaton moment. I think is every, it's on everyone's list that everyone who's played fa f um, blown up Fallout Three. Um, yeah, Mythalop in chat reckons that he quick saves to the side of choice. I don't do that. I don't. I'm not a save scummer. I'm so <laughs> scumming though. That it is, is, it, that's that's it, trying it, to get the it, most out of a single playthrough. I think it, it's um, technically save scumming. I'd say. Yeah, I'm normally quite happy with my decisions. Just snob, aren't you? I normally do make the the good decisions, shall we say? Yeah, yeah I, I always do try. As well. I think although. Although you know the uh, you know where you encounter the vampires, the underground uh, the, mm. the people who drink blood. Yeah. I automatically assumed that vampires were evil and killed them all, even though they're actually good characters in the game. I, I was very tentative all the way through <laughs> that section. I was like, they're going to turn on me any second. They're going to turn they, on me, and I was like, they, ah. don't, they, they don't eat like they don't they don't feast on humans. They want you to find blood banks and feed so they can drink that way. And I just didn't. I wasn't reasonable at all. I just killed them. I just went in there and beat the crap out of them because they were I think vampires. I actually became a vampire. <laughs> they okay. don't. Um, they don't want to. They actually are taking people and, eat, and, and killing them, but you can talk them into not doing that. Yeah, that's, that's and so then you, you go and get you, blood packs. For yeah, them. that's how you do it. That's that's part of the mission. Yeah. Yeah. So but, they're not. They're not entirely good guys. They're just. They're. They're inter Like you say, they're interesting and slightly ambiguous. You. You I, can make. You can make it one way or the other. Yeah, I think many many years of fantasy um, folklore and and. And uh, stuff like that has meant that vampires equals evil instantly. There's, Unless um, you're reading like Twilight or something. Oh god, don't! Even though I, I want Blade to turn up and kill them all in that. <laughs> right. So yeah. there's, there's um, I can't unfortunately show you a moment here, um, but I can show you some gameplay footage from the game. So this is GTA 4. Uh, I remember when this came out. This is this is after San Andreas, isn't it? Um. Yeah. Of course it was, because that was three. So, yeah, I remember the ambience no, of the city. What? San Andreas wasn't three. Could Grand Theft Auto 3 was three. No, you're right. Sorry, I'm an idiot. It was the same the same, the same generation as In three, fact, though. is that even Nico Bell? Yes, it is, Nico. I thought it, was the, I thought it was the expansion then. Anyway, so while this is playing, I just wanted to say, I remember a moment, um, I was actually working away. I was in Birmingham at the time, and I, had, I bought a PS3, uh, specifically for this game and then the game got delivered like quite late unfortunately because of where I was living and um, I, when I got it Sam had already played it um, quite quite a lot and I was sending him text messages going oh my god at <laughs> this oh my god at this oh my god oh my god look at this and, like after about five text messages Sam just sends me a message back and it was something like really blunt and it was something like shut up and leave me alone <laughs> like that. It was like, stop yeah all right mate I've already seen all this I've been playing it since it came out you know I'm like I went to oh, the mate. midnight launch for it at um, the local game shop near us I went to the midnight launch <coughs> and then Cation had is. to wait ages to install it on the PS3 as well yeah there was that yeah um anyway one of the particular moments that I wanted to talk about was just a simple thing getting out of a car leaving the car door open after you've had the radio on in the car and you can hear the radio that yeah. to me was the de that was detail that, that really made the, the, the world people running around with newspapers over the head when it rained you know that kind of thing it, it's it's all AI stuff well I suppose the 
radio thing isn't AI, but it was really cool when it came out. It was like, oh my god, I can't believe this is this is it's like a real world. It's much better than any of the other games, you know. This, this is running a mod as well, by the way. Is it? That's a real that's a real car that shouldn't be in there. That's a Chevrolet, <gasps> yeah. <laughs> oh, we better we better stop this then. Eh? Yeah, oh we're going to content God. claim against us from Chevrolet. Oh, we're, we're, I'm sure we're going to have content claims today, the <laughs> amount of FMV we're saying. We're having problems, unfortunately, with um, with YouTube's content ID system. Um, I would consider this a critical review show, wouldn't you guys? I would, yeah. Yeah, I think so. It's, it's, it's talking about, you know, it's giving, uh, it's giving our opinions on particular moments in games or weapons or whatever. We are critiquing certain moments in video games, which is why we're we, reviewers. I unfortunately, yeah. uh, when we did the weapons episode, I got a, a content ID uh, match on. Oh, hang on, who just unplugged the? Sorry, that was me. Sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> when they, uh, I got a content ID match on the um, the Final Fantasy VII uh, real life Buster Sword video, so I've had to blur that out on the one we've uploaded to YouTube, but, uh, and I've taken the link out as well because I actually disputed it, and the people who um, who had the content claim, they said no. You can't have, you can't use it. So I've taken it out and taken the link out as well. So screw them. Um, it's ridiculous, you know this content ID stuff. It's utterly, utterly ridiculous. We got a match on the Metal Gear Solid thing I uploaded the other day as well, and it's just it's not on. It's not on all. Yeah, yeah, it's on. It's still there. It doesn't get taken down. It just means that someone else can monetize it. So basically, all of the work that we're putting into the video. You know, get collecting all of the clips and all the other stuff. It's uh, it basically someone, a, another company, like Economy, for example, who've put the content ID. It's I know it's automatic, but they can now monetize our video, but we can't monetize it at all. Even though, I suppose the Metal Gear Solid playthrough is different, but when it comes to like a, a clip that's got a content ID match on on our um, on yeah. this show, it, it's I think it's totally unfair because we only show clips for ten, fifteen minutes, seconds, or whatever, or a minute or whatever, you know. But I anyway, um, we just anyway. have to keep battling against it like everybody else on YouTube. Um, right, so yes, moving on to another one. Go on, guys. Someone, uh, someone, choose something for me. What about what about the? Go on, somebody else. Yeah, go on, you, Sam. <clears throat> I was just gonna pick. I'm just scrolling down through the list. I've just clocked up um, uh, the Shadow of the Colossus. Have we all played that? Um, I started to play it on an emulator I installed. It's just so, the first Colossus encounter. Just it, it sort of really sets the uh, sets the tone and the and gives you the impact of what what you're about to do. I just really like it. It's just it's one of those moments that you never quite forget once you have played the game. I was when you I, first see it. When I played this game, it just made me feel a bit sad in general. I think. I think that's the general consensus, isn't it? That's what it's trying to do. I found the um, oh, it's the walkie dude, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure they've all got names. They have all That's got what names. Yeah, Walkie Dude. Walkie Dude. Yeah. I found that some of the later ones were easier than some of the earlier ones as well. They didn't mm. take as long to to kill. Yeah, well, you you well, you sort of know what you're doing, don't you? Though you know the basic strategies and ideas. Yeah. Some of them, I, I yeah. love the way you can just add birds to the sky to add skill instantly. They do that yeah. in movies as well. They make something big, big. They just have some birds flying past it. Yeah, it did, they really did sell the scales. Hold up thy sword. It's um, yeah. The sword shows you their weak points, and then you just stab them in the weak points to, oh, well, either get get them to sort of buckle and let you climb them like this this first one, or it's the weak points that kill them because obviously that sword. As a as a blade, it's not going to really hurt something that size. I think the point is that the sword is magically connected to them, and hitting them on the weak points with the sword will kill them. Obviously, that sword is never good. It's like me being, it's like someone trying to kill me with a um, Pick, a drawing pin. Toothpick, it's really yeah. not going to do anything, is it? You know, this actually does look really gruesome. Like the the thing isn't really fighting back; you're just slaughtering. No, it. Oh, it is, that's yeah. the whole game, mate. It's it's really sad. It, it makes you feel like a bastard. <laughs> yeah, some of them do fight back and fight back hard, but yeah, there's a lot of that in it. They're just these big, seemingly innocent creatures that you just turn up and just slaughter them, and it is this, it makes you feel bad. This was before Assassin's, Assassin's Creed, wasn't it? Yeah, PS2. Yeah, yeah. Wasn't the original Assassin's Creed on PS2? No, it was PS3. It was an it was it was, it was a next gen game. It was one of the first big next gen franchises when when it came out. I'm just thinking the climbing mechanics and animations and fidelity is pretty good. 
It's not perfect, yeah. but it's pretty good, isn't it? Wasn't this uh, yes. done by the same studio as Ico? Yes, Studio yes. Yeah, Ico. Yeah. In fact, his name. Oh, team yeah. Ico. Team, team Ico. Yeah, yes. yeah. The ones who were have now um, all of the team have left. By the way, um, all, oh. all of the main team designers, and they are starting because um, the newest game is taking so long for whatever reasons. I don't, I don't know what the reasons are, and I don't think they will reveal it either. Um, they've moved into another studio. They're writing a new game that's basically the last guardian with without you know with all of the ip and copyright taken out you know similar kind of mechanics or something or because he wanted to the guy who did the designer wanted to make that game and he's frustrated by the fact that whatever it is is stopping them you know publishers or whatever else but there we go well, something the, to do with sony being, being kind of dicks about it apparently i could be wrong there but yeah it's a shame and this is what happens when the tendrils come out and oh, it's was it the end of the video. No, it's not. Um, Sorry, I um, I've stopped it on the stream. Hence why I've stopped it on. The that, that was actually yeah. quite disturbing. That was that was wasn't nice to watch. Well, that's what I mean. So, that's another feeling that you can get from it's a game. Weird, though, isn't, isn't it? it? Yeah. yeah. But you feel very compelled to keep doing it as well because the, I mean, what you don't get from that is obviously when it's quiet, you don't quite get the thrill of it because there is that music playing, but then not so. There's there's often very very. There's a great score. There's like this da 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 when you're climbing up the Colossus. So it has that sort of sadness with the, also this quite heroic thing and you don't really know what to feel sometimes. I mean, the way that playing there without any sound on gives it a very like bleak outlook. But when you get the music yeah. and stuff involved as well, it makes you feel quite ambiguous and unsure. Ambivalent. And you to go on. Yes. Hmm. Yeah, we're not <laughs> um, we're not stopping, by the way, because nope. uh, because we haven't got enough to talk about because we've got way more than enough to talk. Well, about. I was going to say, why don't we do our namesake and why don't we cover a, another moment <laughs> from Half Life? Just about to suggest that. Yeah, because oh. there's there's obviously <clears throat> we've talked about the intro of Half Life and there are loads of excellent moments in Half Life, but I tell you what, the one, big you, moments. You guys. Uh, just honestly, there's like three Half Life entries in this document and stuff. One big. Oh, we made it. We sorry, to make Mr. It easy. Metal Gear Solid over there. <laughs> no, I'm saying that there's the, the, it's all separated, all the Half Life things instead of being oh, in yeah. one place. Yeah. And so the goes, same goes for Red Dead Redemption. We're putting multiple places. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Right, just, I don't, uh, yeah, I don't see that. Anyway, anyway so yeah. The, the, so the, hard. The, the, um, the, the main sequence that a lot of people remember from Half Life is the Resonance Cascade sequence where basically Gordon Freeman is the most um, useless PhD student in the entire world. His job is basically to push a trolley into a nuclear reactor. Um, yeah, that's it, isn't it? That's, that's all his entire job. Yeah, he has but to wear he's... a suit and push a trolley. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, basically you, the game tells you exactly what to do and it's all played to just like a standard science experiment. And it just... It makes it feel like you've done something wrong because you don't know what's going on. It could just suddenly everything starts exploding and then you start going into different. Oh, lovely. You start going to different dimensions and, and the screens flashing and stuff. And you're thinking, have I done something wrong? Am I about to die here? Is the game going to kill me? And I'm going to go back and push the trolley in properly? You don't know what the hell is going on. And it, it's it's so beautifully done because it, it doesn't put it on a plate for you, it doesn't spell it out. It makes you unsure. Just and so you're aware, <clears throat> uh, when I blow my nose or cough, I've got I've got it muted going out, so All right, people okay. people can't hear it. Just you. Well, guys. I can hear it. <laughs> um, you could actually die during this point as well, couldn't you? You could. You could walk into yeah. the reactor as well. I did yeah. actually. <laughs> so there was. <laughs> that so should be my thing. Even worse, PSC student than Multiple... Gordon. You actually just walked into it. <laughs> <laughs> I went. Ooh, what's this shiny thing? <laughs> I wonder if it'll be friends with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, it's one of those things, though. It's, again, it's another save scumming thing. I love to save things and just go, what would happen if I jumped down this big, massive hole that's got spikes at the bottom of it? What's the uh, death animation like? I'd just like to see how much effort's been put into games, I think. I guess that's an interesting way to maximise your value, I guess. There we go. So he's put it in. Everything goes wrong. Things are exploding. The, the, the scientists in the room start saying, get away from there, Freeman! And then they get zapped by a big piece of lightning stuff. There you go. That's them getting killed. Yeah. <laughs> it's just... It's 
beautifully done. And it is don't such you a get, great... uh, Don't you get transported to like another dimension and some big fish thing yeah. just about to eat you and, and you get you pulled do, back? You do, yeah, right at the end. Yeah. I noticed you've taken bit. the colours from it as well. No, of Maybe course I did. Maybe inadvertently. Uh, I, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to design anything ever again, Chris. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, it's just Ooh. not gone black on there. Yeah, it's just waiting for the... Uh... Oh, there we go. It's, it's yeah. quite, again, it's quite an a epic moment that in the game. Cool, it's right actually. early it on, isn't it? It goes completely black and all you can hear right. is you... You can run around in this bit as well, yeah. you know, and I ran I ran for ages. It's like, how far can I get? How far can I get? And didn't yeah. get very far. <laughs> it, it did just beautifully... Yeah, you can run away from these guys as well. Yeah. yeah. The Vortigons. The Vortigons. I think there's all like a collective mind. But yeah, it's, it's such a, a well-done cinematic again. I think... For me, a lot of this stuff is is a cinematic. It's the 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 larger than life things that games <clears> can do. And if the game can capture you, it can put you in those situations. Then it can make you feel uh, feel a lot more than maybe you could even feel from a movie in some respects because mm. you're controlling it. Yeah, this you're, you're invested I, in it. This is one of the reasons why I forked out three hundred quid on an Oculus Rift because those moments. Can just only only get better from being in three D. More immersed in it. Yeah. So moving on, next one. Um, I think this is Battlefront Two, or it might be Battlefront One. I can't. What Battlefront One? I can't remember. But um, one of the I, I said I've mentioned Battlefront a few times, and it is a particularly fun game. Especially, I mean, it's multiplayer mostly. There was a single player campaign, but it was all based around the battlefield battlefront um, type mechanic. Where you could capture points and take Aren't over Dice them. doing a, a new version of this? Um, the guys possibly. who made Battlefield uh, three and four. But just I think they're at, working on the Star Wars franchise. Look at Was how this... this this particular level feels. Oh, this feels like you are actually on Hoth and you're mm. fighting. But the the moment I'm talking about is just coming up now. This guy's particularly good at it. Was this on the GameCube, Chris? No, uh, it, there was a GameCube version of it, but it was I'm better sure on, the on the PC. <laughs> and this right. is taking down an at at. And I think it's just brilliant that you could do it. Again, it's immersion, the amount of Star Wars-ness that you could get in it, you know? Uh, you could actually get inside the Atats as well, I think, and drive them if you were the Imperial guys. This guy just takes both of the Atats on the level down, and that's it. I think they respawn, again, like all Battlefield. <laughs> um, it's often there's an ATST as well over there that you can take down and shoot. And I just thought, that again, they're really cool moments in uh, in the Battlefront games. I don't think he could play as Jedi's in this one, so this kind of stuff was kind of di you know it was it was the it was the core of the gameplay. I think a lot of this rests on the fact that it's letting you do things that you, you found cool in the movies, isn't it? It's it's the it's repaying that nostalgia by letting you do it yourself. A hundred percent, and there's yeah. nothing better than it, in my opinion. And that's why the lightsabers are so good in these games. It's not because they're a particularly great weapon, although. I guess in some way they are, but it's the fact that it's letting you use them. Mm -hmm. mm. This guy is a demon in this... Uh, I don't even know what these ships are called. No, he's good though, isn't he? The river's playing it. He's, he's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, uh, either that or everyone on the server has no idea how to take what the ship down. Is this Muller player at the moment then in yeah, this yeah, game? Yeah, this is, this is a... All right, cool. Actually, no, if you look at the bottom right, it looks like they're bot names, so he's playing single player, but you can play this multiplayer. This right. is a lot of fun, this game, and we should have a go at some point if we can get it working. I'd be up for that. It yeah. is a lot of fun, but you need a lot of people, unfortunately, as well. It's one of those with six, it's like 64 players to make ah, right. some of the levels decent. Otherwise, you, uh, yeah, you could, yeah, yeah, of course you could. Um, anyway, yeah, so it's, um, I said it was a moment I remembered, like, trying to perfect it. And taking ages, you have to have someone to shoot the uh, hook as well in the ship, so it's two two people in the ship. Right. It's good. It's good. Fair enough. There's a lot of good moments in that game, though. There's a lot of good battles from the films and that again that you can recreate. And can mm. you play as an Ewok? Yeah, and you collect nuts. I think you can <laughs> too. <laughs> think Why you would you ever want to? to? Well, maybe you just know. want to be really hairy. Maybe you can't. Well. I can't remember, I'll be honest. But I know you can play every single level. You could play as different races and different different types of people in the in each, you know, different classes and that. It's it's again, it's a battlefront. It's it's where the Call of Duties and and the battlefields come from. Came from. Mm. Um, oh. Yeah. Good. Right. Well, um, we're at um, half uh, eight now. 
Um, hour and a half, uh, right, but we've still got quite a lot of ones that I want to talk about, so I don't mind going on for a little bit longer. I, don't I was going to uh, say Portal 2. Yeah, we've got to talk about Portal 2. But... Or right. Portal in general. Yeah, the Portal, Portal in, general. in general. Yeah, they're, they're, they're again games of moments, aren't they? Okay, so we'll start on Portal 1 then. Um, there's only one in the list that I'm aware of with Portal 1, and this is a moment I remember being particularly um, like, oh shit, is this the end of the game? Oh shit, is something like bad going to happen? Mm. Uh, am I going to actually be able to get out of this? But there is are actually. A are you going to get the cake? Yeah, because it just before this it tells you that he. <laughs> yeah, tells you you're going to get the cake. I think this guy might die here actually. Oh no, no, there you go. Anyway, that was that was easier than I thought. <laughs> the moment that the moment that I I actually didn't do that. I fired it right up to the top up there, and came out. I didn't. I'm sure it was much bigger than it was. Uh, the the gap it wasn't as obvious that you had to do that. I think there's you... more than a few ways to do that. Yeah. Well, what what's really great about it is that it, it Portal was so good at giving you that feeling that you that you I think one of you guys said this in another episode that it, you almost feel like you you're breaking the game. Yeah. But you're not. You're just doing. You're just thinking laterally that the game wants you to. But no, it gives you that sort of feeling. You think that you, you feel like you've almost outsmarted the game a little bit, which is a really nice feeling. There's, but you haven't, but it feels like you have. There yeah, are a lot it. of uh, moments in Portal like that. I mean, all of the Ratman um, secret areas in Portal One and Two. The mm. Ratman's a, a legend in the in the Portal world, and he's this old scientist that's been left in the facility, and he just keeps moving from like rat hole to rat hole. I think he calls them, and uh, and he just leaves like little clues. Don't be like. Don't believe in the cake or the cake yeah, is a the lie. The cake is a lie. Um, don't don't believe that. Don't believe Glados or whatever, you know things like that. And it's it's cool to find them. It's <laughs> completely unnecessary, but the it's cool to find them. And there's also a comic that joins Portal One and Portal Two together that features Rap Ratman. Um, that mm. he's he's I can't remember exactly what the story is, but he it's just connecting Portal One and Portal Two together. Um, so moving on to Portal Two. Well, the ending songs to both Portal games are, are a moment unto themselves as well. Yeah. Both of them are absolutely fantastic and catchy and memorable and funny. Yeah, the um, the Tura Opera, as they call it, in mm. the uh, in Portal 2. Uh, right at the end, again, you think you're going to die. You think that's it, right? Okay, I've yeah. finished the game. The FMV then- started, obviously, because you can tell. And then this happens. They start. Oh, in fact, I should turn the music on for this. It's almost... <laughs> Uh, there was a few little Easter eggs as well, where you could kind of, if you crawled into certain hidden areas, you could actually see the turrets on their own, just having a bit of a sing song. <laughs> oh really? no, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, I thought I thought you were going to say you can see him practicing for the opera at the end. <laughs> there, there might have been. Yeah, there they were. Yeah, they had they had good personality though the turrets, didn't they? Mm. Mm. Here it is. It gets quite epic as well, doesn't it? Uh, we have had uh, that. I had the big... Pavarotti turret at the back. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. <laughs> Is this the end of Portal One? Oh, this is Portal 2. This is definitely Portal 2. I thought the end of Portal 2 was her singing a ki- singing a song about the cake to you. That's a cake, Portal yeah, 1. She does. Portal 1. Yeah. Oh, obviously. This is this is the song, I think it's called um, I Want You Gone or something, where she's sort of talking about the, what's happened in the first two games. And saying that's after just... the uh, the opera finishes though, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's the, that's like the credits song. This is just the end yeah. game song. but there's And the cake song is also just the credits song. But they're great moments just because the songs are so good. The first one was still alive, and then the second one's uh, uh, "Want You Gone" or "Glad You're Gone" or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. They're both really good. Yeah. They're both yeah, actually on uh... Spotify as well. <laughs> and, and yeah, like moments. There's so many great moments. Like there's a moment in Portal Two where you can go to. Um, there's references to to Half Life, aren't there? And there's like a, there's a ship you can find that they've talked about in Half Life Two. In um, in one of the Cave Johnson levels, you can get through a door you're not supposed to be able to get to and see a like a, a part of a ship or something. That's I can't remember it now because it's just obscure detail. But there's loads of little details that link yeah. those two franchises together as well. Uh, Black Mace is mentioned in both of them. Mm. Yeah, it's 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 like a linked facility or something, isn't it? Yeah. Well, um, in the first one, it's mentioned in the song at the end. In the second one, Cave Johnson's really upset with Black Mesa because yeah. they must have stole something off him and he goes on a bit of a rant. Cave yeah. Johnson's going to be in my characters in games. I love Cave Johnson. He's awesome. such a good character. Exploding lemons. Oh, I love the guy. 
And I love I love the fact I can't remember his name now, but the guy who voices him, the he's JK Simmons. Yeah, JK Simmons, yeah. that's it. Who yeah, is he's... to be fair, now that I've come back to now that I've watched Spider Man as not as much of a Spider Man fanboy, he is easily the best thing in those films as well. <laughs> Here's yeah. J. Jonah Jameson, but that's not on topic, sorry. <laughs> I think in terms of moments for me in Portal 2, the intro, the the, the whole um, you're in your little room thing and then the room starts to come apart and you realise you're in a giant facility full of rooms. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's just like, here is some art. <laughs> just make sure. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> Love all that stuff. Yeah, I think, I, I think Portal 2 is up there in my favourite games ever. And I've... Oh, definitely. It's a, it's so well scripted and such a good fun game, and I like the fact that you don't go around shooting people, and that isn't the main mechanic of the game, and the mm. puzzles are all different and all interesting, and it very rarely repeats itself. The and only the downside I have to Portal Two is that it's not massively replayable. I yeah, disagree. I, 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 oh, I, no, I, I, I agree with Sam. I I replayed it um, when I did a review for it a, a few years ago, and um, only because I needed to remind myself of what was going on, and. I really enjoyed it after a few years of not playing it, you know. I think it is replayable, but not obviously immediately. You couldn't just jump back into it. Yeah, I got about halfway through the Cave Johnson stuff and realised that I, I, I played it because I wanted all these cool moments, but there was a lot of game in between the moments. Yeah, there's a lot of puzzles that you've already done yeah. and you can remember. But again, I'd forgotten... Oh, excuse me. I'd forgotten most of the puzzles. Mm. Um, right, I've mentioned... I mentioned this before, and I don't. Again, I don't think he, any of you guys have played it. But um, Clive Barker's Undying, yeah. Steve's played, played it, Undying. I think. Oh, have you? Well, there's there's a, a power in the game called Scry, um, and that's when you uh, some it's some stone I think you pick up at some point, but it um, it basically changes all of the the surrounding area into like what once was or what happened afterwards. So he's just oh, changed his, yeah. his image now. <laughs> this shit me up big time like because the atmosphere of the game again it doesn't look particularly good in the graphics front or it wasn't particularly great in terms of gameplay either but the scry thing allows you to change like you could see where people had died in the game and you could see like what people had turned into on the photos like that one that we just saw then it was the whole family from the house that had become demons or something you know and then you get all these these crazy monsters jumping out at you every five seconds making horrible screeching noises and stuff and um I didn't complete it. I didn't get much further than the first few hours into the game because I was so scared. <laughs> I completely forgot about this game. It it really crapped me up. I uh, I would recommend <laughs> it to anyone who likes a scare. Even now, I think it would still do the job. Yeah, do you know what? It looks pretty good. I, I I'm interested in it. <laughs> um, I, I it was it's from the '90s. This you know, it's 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 old. This game. It's now. a quick three engine I think, isn't it? Uh, don't know. Looks I think like it is. Possibly the Unreal Engine. I don't know. But yeah, I mean, it's again Clive Barker's uh, a writer, a horror writer, and Undying. I don't know if he's written a book for that. I'm not a horror reader, so I don't, I don't know. But yeah, it's um, it's just that one particular skill because sometimes you'd turn it on, you'd look at something, and then that would kick something off in the world, and then they'd they'd, they'd come running at you and be like, "Oh my god, I'm so, <laughs> I'm such 2000, a 2001, it's the Unreal Engine, the yeah. original Unreal Engine. Mm. Looks great for the original Real Real Engine. But yeah, I um, I I'd, I'd recommend it if you like horror games. Go for it. It's it's probably free now on GOG. You know, it's that old. <laughs> uh, I don't think it was particularly um, popular when it came out. No, it was well received, but it was just uh, it was well received for the reasons that you mentioned the the atmosphere and the 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 kind of shock value because there I... weren't many there weren't many scary games out at the time. I, really? uh, I lost sleep over this game, I swear. Even though I only played a few hours of it, I was like, mm, nope, not playing that again. Nope, never. Uh, ah, yeah, the, uh, the, the monster even, in the dumb waiter. Doesn't even look that bad now, looking at it. But Yeah, I was saying 2001, what, there was only probably Resident Evil and Silent Hill were the only big franchises that were doing that. Mm. Stuff that you could probably just, off the top of my head, pick out. Yeah, but anyway, I have talked about that game before, and I, that's why I kind of wanted to show some of that footage, because that is a moment I remember quite distinctly again. Mm. Uh, God, so much, so much stuff we could talk about. Let's uh, let's do a couple more and then we'll uh, we'll close up the show. Well, so we have a bit of earthworm Jim with the cow launch. <laughs> go on then. Um, the I didn't put that this, in there; just made me laugh. <laughs> uh, 
the reason I put this one in is because uh, you launch the cow at more or less the beginning of the game, and it seems completely insignificant with all these type of slaps of humor that goes on in, in the game. It seems like you know they're just put there for the sake of randomness. And every now and again, you'll you know you'll be on a, uh, a space mission, and the cow will kind of fly past the moon. But then, if if you ever got to the end of the game, and I've included the video on it as well, uh, I, f I forget what the princess is called. Um, princess, uh, what's the name? That's the whole name. Princess, what's the yeah, <laughs> princess? What's her name? <laughs> uh, you I finally actually... get a princess. What's her name? Um, <laughs> if you know the, the hero gets the girl, and you're about to kiss her, and the cow flies down and flattens her. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think I completed this game. You know, no? it's hard. The last level, which is called Buttville, yeah. is. It's right way back to, uh, oh, what was the uh, Queen Huge pulsating, malformed, festering slug for a butt or something? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so funny. Uh, Typical Warner there, Brothers stuff, isn't it? That the princess was meant to be like the deformed, like malformed, ugly one of the family or something. That all the others look like horrible, big. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's funny. I oh. think the cow actually had a name as well, but I, it, it escapes me now. No, that's it. That is the. I love that. That is the end of the game. I, I think I like that. Yeah. It's good. It's good. <laughs> that's class. Who did that game? Who who developed? Uh, it? Shiny again. Was it right? Did it MDK? Yeah. Wow. I've, Funny uh, guys. Yeah, good guys. Are they still they're still around doing things. There must be. Yeah, what David Perry's doing there? What um, about uh, Mortal Kombat? You see, I I said I said before of. I kind of went off Mortal Kombat many, many years ago, you know. Oh, but, um, for the sake of when it first came out. Oh yeah, I mean it was like, wow, look at the goriness. Yeah. Apparently, the latest one is um, is oh, very, it's very good. Gory. Um, X, isn't it? Mortal Kombat X. Ah. That's the next one that's coming out. It's not out yet. So well, that's what one. is this? This is a fatality, isn't it? You're talking about. Yeah, they, so this is. This is Sub Zero doing his. Yeah, that music. <laughs> Head with spinal column still attached, rip out. What was your uh, your first fatality? What what was it? My first was probably Scorpion uh, doing his fire breath. Mine was nice. Raiden just basically zapping people till the head exploded. Yeah, mine was. Um, I think it was one of Sub Zeros where you you shot a, like a little ball of ice at them and then they exploded. Mine was uh, Liu Kang with his dragon, where he turned. Uh, it, you had to get it exactly right. You had to be exactly pixel perfect as uh, far enough away from the the opponent do up down left right a b c or something it was something rubbish like that and then they he'd were... turn into a dragon and then bite their heads off <laughs> they were hard to do weren't they, they were all the moves are really hard to do <laughs> yeah, i used I to mean... play mortal kombat and just repeatedly play the same fight over and over again just to try and do the fatalities yeah i, I only so, got uh, raiden sorted i think why I, do we I think like each that character though? had two why do we like fit why, why do we like the fact that it was uber gory as a kid because just because it was completely different at the time, I think. There was nothing else like it. There was nothing that showed you gore at that level at the time. It wasn't because I particularly enjoyed the gore. It, it was, was just, silly gore as well. It was It was stupid. Yeah. But it was just it was in... Like blood drops the size yeah. of fists and stuff. And maybe because it was so difficult to do. Do you yeah. know what I could do with here? And I, probably, I can't be bothered to try and look for it, but do you remember Gladiator? Um, you know where uh, Joaquin, Joaquin Phoenix played Commodus yes. in that? Yeah. There's a bit where they're all fighting, and if you could see my face, it would be funnier, but basically there's a bit where they're all fighting, and he just look, looks at them and takes his tongue out and goes, yeah. like that. Yeah. That's basically why we like Mortal Kombat. Yeah. That emotion. That, do you know that, that that scene, he didn't actually mean to do that. That was taken between takes. They left the camera filming. All right. And he was just pulling oh. face and stuff, and he actually put edited yeah. into the movie. That, that, was a, that was a real, that was a real uh, facial expression. <laughs> that guy's the best bad guy. Like, I hated him by the end of that film. In fact, I hated yeah. him at the beginning of that film. I was like, you know, apparently Commodus wasn't a bad person as well. Like, well, in history. And he didn't have incestual, incestual relationships with his sister or anything like that. He, he was just totally, like, a nice... In fact, everybody loved him. Are you saying <laughs> that Hollywood got the history wrong? It wasn't the fact yeah. they got it wrong. It was just they completely they used his name and... Completely twisted a character on their heads, but anyway, yeah. Which is um, kind of a shape for him as a historical figure, but yeah, good film. <laughs> yeah, exactly, and it, it's like it's a bit of a odd legacy in it. Um, one of the moments I have mentioned before, and again, this was this is actually from the gaming annoyances thing, but I thought in order to balance out all the moments of oh my god, that's amazing, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about a really annoying one, and it is just the... you to drag us in the shit. Shut up! Yeah. Shut up! <laughs> We've been having a good time here. Now What's you your gonna... language, you? <laughs> <laughs> um, right, so my 
worst moment and and con- I, I hate it more than anything ever especially considering I love the games are the um Legend of Zelda chest opening moments not the chest as in chesticles opening moments the when you open a chest now it's not because it's not because it's an annoying sequence it's lovely I've got the music on as well but this happens 50 million times in the game and it's the same every time every time you get a map it's the same text and you can't skip it and it just makes you want to murder if it's also when you pick up some crap like a rupee and you're like ah yeah. come on but that just i mean that like na 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 it was it's just like mate honestly i've seen this can i <laughs> can, you, can i not just skip it and why do you have to make such a big fucking fuss about me opening a chest <clears throat> language chris is <laughs> <laughs> going to try not to swear this week i promise i have been a lot better I'll be honest. You I've only sworn a few times. Um, You've only just been mildly Tourette-ish this, this yeah. time. Since we're kind of... Well, it's kind of retro. Uh, I'm going to uh, go for another FMV one. Go on. Sonic CD. Yes. Yay! Beautiful. It, specifically, the Japanese slash European intro to Sonic CD. Is that the one with uh, the cooler song on it? Yes. Yeah, that, that's, that's one with Toot uh, Toot Sonic Warrior. Yeah, Toot Toot Sonic. I mean, obviously the Japanese didn't have a clue what they were singing about because it doesn't make any sense. Right, I'm going to put the music on for this just to... Uh... But just uh, the first time I saw this again, it was one of just, just those jaw-dropping moments. It didn't look this yeah. good on the actual original Mega CD as well. It was on a no. small, a little small screen in the middle. This will be the, um, the Xbox 360 version, mm. I'd imagine. <laughs> uh, well, he actually... Um, they re-released a video of it when they'd done the 10th anniversary uh, Sonic Adventure 2, which was only released for two days in Japan, which I have a copy of. Let's it's a- fighting love. Has anyone ever seen <laughs> any of the Sonic the Hedgehog cartoons that they released? Like, Unfortunately, yeah. yeah. Why, yeah, we, they, we, we, why were they never anywhere near as cool as this? Nowhere near as cool God, as this. Sonic the SD and I were well into Sonic at the time. I was to buy the comics and everything. Yeah, I, was not, I was not into Sonic. I mean, I played the games, yeah, and I enjoyed them, but I wasn't a Sonic guy. I was, I was a serious Sonic fan at the time. We used to get Sonic the comic and... Uh... Yep. Yeah. I had a Sonic plushie, I had everything, yeah. I had a couple of Sonic the Hedgehog books that were like other stories that he, him and Tails got up to and stuff. Well, I, I had a Meme Machine special comic which actually showed how Sonic mm. came to be blue and, and what the story was behind Robotnik and everything. I think it was really rare and I've got it in some, some kind of cellophane. All that stuff, it's, it's, by the way, in current Sonic games is just not how it is anymore. No, it's I know. Not, they've totally changed their own lore, but yeah. whatever. Yeah, it's... Um... This is when Sonic was still cool. Yeah, but yeah. can you imagine again, back in the mid-90s, having a game sing and show you a cartoon? It's yeah. just... The ending I, I, was brilliant I, as well. I didn't play it. I played, I played Sonic CD at a shop. Um, I played it at Curry's, I think, and it was in Stockton. Uh, middle, it was at Teesside Park, possibly, because he used to have um, cons. Oh, it could have been at Debenhams in Stockton, actually. <laughs> <laughs> they had used to have consoles on on display that you could play. Um, Mythalos just mentioned speedrunning it, and I've seen some speedruns of this game, and they're excellent. He's a speedrun player. <laughs> oh, it's this just is metallics. metallics. This is metallics, yeah. It's I speed know. Uh, I'm just saying that, saying he's fast, isn't he? I reckon this is the best looking Sonic game as well. Which ones? The two D ones. Sonic CD. Sonic CD. Oh, it's CD again, is it? Right. Yeah. I think I think I would argue that possibly Sonic 3D looks slightly, but I like Sonic's model in Sonic 3D more. This is the Sonic oh, 2 it's... model with extra animations on it. It basically. is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the the, 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 uh, <laughs> they added like a because you could do the spin dash from a like upwards Standard, spot, yeah. the run the running. Yeah. Uh, spot Which thing. I like actually. Yeah, this guy yeah. dies a couple of times, but it's it, this is a hard boss, Sonic Metal Sonic. It was the hardest bit of the game for me, I think. I didn't have much trouble with this, to be honest. I did. <laughs> I died a lot on that. I didn't play him. I'm talking of Sonic. There's uh, the first Sonic game. One of you guys have put down as uh, the Green Hill Zone. I put yeah. Green Hill Zone down just because uh, I remember when I f- first... first I, I played on a Mega Drive before I got one. And I think uh, I was still on computers at the time. And I remember playing it just thinking, this looks beautiful. Yeah, it, it, is, a, it is an iconic... Um, I'm not sure if it's a moment, but it's an iconic level. It's an iconic yeah. experience. It yeah. is, yeah. I mean, it's an extended moment. I fell in love completely with the music from this song as well. Oh yeah, it's it is good. Brilliant music. I, I used to, I used to get these situations when I was a kid where I'd actually fall in love 
like literally fall in love with a piece of music and not be able to get out of my head and this was one of those pieces of music it just yeah. I don't know it did something to me weird that was a speed run there by the way over 25 seconds that's not that very was... fast <laughs> I've seen it done a lot quicker that, than that <laughs> I'd like to yeah. see you do it that fast oh I, I'm not a speed runner oh right but everyone else has to be <laughs> yeah I'm right <laughs> Just... Do, you, do, you go to, do you go to like a, a I theater? Love you, Lou. I love you, Lou, <laughs> but I want to kill you. Um, right. Uh, I'm, I'm still gonna I'm gonna keep going because I think this is we've got a lot to we've got a lot to say about these and there's a lot of material to get through. Um, okay. One of the ones that just popped into my head was the Metroid series. Now Metroid again. We talked about this, but this is a moment. Um, this is the very end of the very first game, um, and it's where it's where it's revealed that you've saved the universe from the evil Metroid, uh, but you're a woman. And it's what? like, <laughs> watch. It's not but you're a woman. It's and you're a and woman. woman. And you're a woman. Okay, and you're a woman. But I'm just saying that it's like but it was still in true sexist fashion. You're wearing a bikini. Yeah, of, of course. course. That's what I, I was just going to say that the transition then as well was particularly. Um, Easy, wasn't it? it is, sorry, not easy. It was a particularly uh, bad transition from Samus Aran to naked woman in bikini. But yeah, so that was one of the moments in Metroid. <laughs> How are um, you naked in a bikini? <laughs> oh, you know what I want. But, oh, God, to be sure fair, I... I imagine that, you know, in that armour suit, it's pretty, probably bloody warm, isn't it? It doesn't need, like, loads of clothes on and a, and a jumper. That's a lovely way to look at it, Sam. I, I bless you, but... I'm really think, trying to give them the benefit of the doubt there. Yeah, I, I, that's the problem. It is. It's that's the, another moment that I wanted to talk about was the end of Super Metroid. Again, you guys haven't played Super Metroid, have you? I have. Oh, have you? Not much, not yeah. much. But I oh, know right. lots about Super Metroid. I it's had a friend who was obsessed with it. I 100 percented it. I was totally obsessed with it. 99 percented it. Sorry, because I couldn't find that whatever it was. I had everything full. I told you this before. I think everything was full. All of the all of the missiles, super missiles, bombs. Uh, all of the items, everything. There was nothing available, but I just couldn't complete it with 100% for some reason. 99 or 98% of it. But anyway, it's yeah, you, had to so... play, you had to get that last bit by playing it multiplayer. Did... No, oh, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Did you? <laughs> really? Anyway, so what, what happens here? This is the fa the last boss battle. Metro, um, super, sorry. Oh, my God. Mother Brain pins you up against the wall with this super laser and you're like, oh my health's going down shit, I'm on my last bar of energy if you look at the top left uh, mm -hmm. and then you come down to your last and she's just about to just about to power up again just about to nail you and then Metroid comes and saves you um, and Metroid comes and saves you but what, what, what happens here, what's really clever is there's a lot of sound as well going on here as well, but he he drains the energy from Mother Brain, gets him to a point. There's a lot of um, iconography all the way through. The, not iconography. Um, everyone who, all of the bosses that aren't like ready to fight or they're dead, they turn into this grey. So that's what that is there. He just turned into like a grey, greeny grey. So you think that's gone? That's it. It's dead. Right. Cool. I've won. I've won. I've beaten the game. And then the Metroid decides to give you all the health that has just drained out of Mother Brain back. This is like a cutscene at the end of the game, basically. I'm confused. So you met, I thought the Metroids were the bad guys. Well, they I thought are. Mother That's Brain the was thing. a Metroid. Mother, Mother Brain is controlling the Metroids, and the Metroids are an alien race. So now, Metro, now she's come back and said, "Right, I'm going to nail this Metroid that's killed me." He finishes off, comes up, and then you think, "Right, that's it, gone." Comes back, gets ex just explodes. And then Why was the he final, helping you? I, on the final bit comes down. Well, I'll, I'll tell you that in a minute. But the final, the, the, he drops down onto you, gives you your final bit of health, and you get this super like laser. And it's like it's just mint at this point in the game. You're like, what the fuck is going on? Is it the end? Do I have to? And then you've got control of the character again by the end of it. Basically, Mother Brain can do nothing, and you just end up killing it. And that's and pretty that's, cool, actually. That's it is a cool, really man. mint ending to a, a, a game. Um, it's another. It's cathartic again, isn't it? It's like yeah, yeah. It's not necessarily hard gameplay. It's just really cool. Satisfying. Yeah, mm. very satisfying. Considering you're flashing like rainbow colours and you've got this mint laser as well. And you like... don't punch your mother brain in the face. <laughs> <laughs> just add insult to injury. <laughs> <laughs> the teabagger next as well. 
And then, then a bomb kicks off, and you've got three minutes to escape the the layer. Uh, oh man, this is a mint game. I've been playing it again recently, actually. Um, I got the SNES out a while back, and I played like the first hour or so of the game. But it's so complicated. There's so much stuff going on in it. You get super run as well. There's like loads of cool little um, uh, loads of Bonuses. upgrades that you can get all the way through the game. Yeah. Anyway. Does, um, does Metroid Prime live up to this stuff? I know Metroid Prime is no. a very well regarded game, but <laughs> it, it something tells me it's not quite as good as this. This Super Metroid was to me the um, the ultimate the ultimate Metroid game. Metroid Prime, I played it in its first person to start off with. Yeah, and, I know it is. Yeah, and, I've seen Steve playing it, and Steve. It's, it's very it. dark. What do you mean dark in terms of? It's in. It just feels you know like very lonely. Um, right, and you you spend a lot of time, or in my experience anyway, spent a lot of time, kind of say like walking around trying to find things. I um I bought them all when they've all come out, and I played maybe an hour of each of the games at the most. Didn't get on with them. Never played Fusion, uh, but I completed I got that Prime. As well, yeah. Is it good? Do you like it? Um, I played it enough to complete it. Uh, so fair enough. I don't. I mean, I, I don't remember an awful lot from it. No, but I mean, I, I just I, didn't get along with it because it was like it was trying to do the same stuff as Metroid. You know, you still had the morph ball, you still had, you still had missiles and all the other stuff, but yeah. it just didn't feel right in first person. Plus, it went into third person when he went into the morph ball, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. and it didn't feel particularly good on the. Uh, was it the GameCube? Yeah, it was the GameCube. Yeah, right? the GameCube. I got, I've got it on the GameCube and Wii. I've got one of them on the Wii, whatever that was. Well, I thought I think up Fusion by... was on the Wii and Prime was on the uh, Cube. Yeah, it is a very well-regarded game. Um, a lot of the Metroid fans do like it, but obviously, not everyone. It looks very nice. Yeah. yeah. Right. Um, has someone unplugged the speakers again? No. Oh, I just heard my own voice for the first time since the uh, start of the podcast. Uh, right, there's one or two other. I'm going to go through, and then we'll uh, we'll close up. Mass Effect 2, the intro to Mass Effect 2 specifically, because it's um, basically yeah, it's, you start off... Go on. It's a very strange way to start a game. I think um, yeah. if it's what is, uh, is this Shepard's death? Yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's, it starts the game by killing off the hero. Yeah, and then, and then there's a really meant like FMV sequence where it's yeah. basically your body getting re generated and kind of put back together um, and then that sets the precedence for the game because basically you uh, again if anyone hasn't played Metal Gear um... <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Chris. anything That's that begins with them <laughs> is, is that a Freudian slip? I don't know it's something... I think mean, that's Freudian no, I'm not sure it's Freudian there's no mums and dads involved is there? well I don't know is there? I don't know <laughs> well, there is in Metal Gear. That's, that's too. <laughs> Freud wasn't just about uh, having sex with your parents. No, no, no. <laughs> pretty, pretty much. <laughs> but pretty much, see. Anyway, was um, the, anyway. the uh, Mass Effect Two. You're working for uh, um, I've Cerberus. The name. Cerberus, yeah, and Cerberus is mentioned in the first one as a as a evil corporation, basically. But you end up working for them, and again, that kind of sets the precedence for everything in the game. But it's again, it's one of those moments where it's like. You know, God, are they actually going to, you know... In fact, when it happens, I didn't believe it. I was like, nah, yeah. does that mean I'm going to play as someone else? At every point all the way through, you just expect to survive somehow. Mm. But... Uh, a lot of these moments are about deaths, aren't they? A lot of these well, moments they're, they're, are... Um, they're about impactful moments, aren't they? And, and the biggest impactful moment most people will come across <laughs> is, is their death. Will experience is their own deaths. Yeah. <laughs> So let's talk about our own death. Um, you know what? Her death hasn't come in yet. I'm I'm trying to her. I say her again because I played Mass Effect as a her, and it's really weird watching FMV videos from other people's playthroughs where it's a, it's a bloke and it's like, what? I don't remember that. <laughs> and it's different voice as well. Obviously, different voice. Obviously. <laughs> Hi, so, I, I am honestly sometimes. So when you played you. through it as a girl, did you have relations with girls or with men? Blow up both. Ah. Oh, Chris is greedy. <laughs> you know what? I don't. I don't do it in my in my life. I'm. I'm. You know. I'm. I'm happy with with my wife and everything else. But I, I, why not in games? Why not live vicariously through a game if it allows you to do it? 
Yeah, yeah. I've, 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 I've got a problem with it. It's just not something that appeals to me. You all spoke at once, and I only heard Steve. What did you say, Lou? I said, is this where you're going to admit that you're into furry stuff as well? Yeah, well, I, you know what I'm like? I'll admit anything to anybody. <laughs> I, am, I am an open and honest person. I, I am heterosexual, but I enjoy pursuing... Like, uh, when we play... Um, Dragon Age Origins. There's a there's an elf in that who is the gayest elf on the planet. He's <laughs> he's really 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 gay. Zul Zulf or Zachary or something like that. Anyway, we just missed her death. <laughs> but um, his death, his death. Her, yeah, whatever. Shepherd's death. death. Oh, actually, this is the. Um, sorry, I just sort of turned it off then. But this is the regeneration moment in it. Um, but yeah, in Dragon Age Origin, there's this there's this elf that's like really flirty and quite slutty as well. And it's a male elf, and I played as a male character in that. I played as a male dwarf, because you couldn't play as a female dwarf, I don't think. I, I think. But anyway, there's a lot. Same. There's a lot of racism and all kinds of stuff in Dragon Age. It's quite, it's quite a in-depth kind of ecosystem in the game. Um, but yeah, I, I played as a, a gay male dwarf. No, bisexual male dwarf, because I also got it on with Morrigan. And I tried with Alistair, but Alistair would not have any of it. He was was not on. Not. In fact, I think he he doesn't have a gay relationship. I don't think in that. But anyway, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with with the I didn't, I didn't say there was wrong anything that. wrong at all. I, I was just asking a question. Said, you started getting all defensive. Yeah, oh, no, no, I wasn't. Oh, sorry, <laughs> that was me defensive. No, I wasn't. I wasn't intended to be defensive. Then sorry. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I like. I like exploring every avenue in in games. If yeah. uh, if I give the, given the option, I was just curious. That meant, if, if you played a woman. Like, did you have relations with men or with women? Because obviously you can be bisexual or homosexual or heterosexual in Mass Effect. Um, I don't think you can in the first two. If you're a bloke in the first two games, you can basically just be hetero, right? I mean, I'm, don't know. I'm not sure because I've played through the male character. character and... I'm sure that there's a female character. You can have a relationship with a female character in the original because there was a big think, thing about it. I'm trying to think who. You I mean, all I, the Asari are female, so if you get it on with Liara... No, you can. In, in the first Liara, one, yeah. Yeah, Liara. In the first one, if you're the male shepherd, you can have a uh, homosexual relationship with... Oh, what's he called? It begins with K. It's between him and Ashley that you choose whether who lives or dies in the suicide K mission. Kieran or something like that. Caden. 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 Yeah, you can have a relationship with him because then that extends on to the third one, I think, if, if you save him. Oh, okay. This is all... Because I've only played a bit of the first one, I didn't. Could know. be oh, It's it's again, it's an awesome cinematic experience, and this is going to lose you in even more um, weird weirdness, Lou. Because if you haven't, you what? If you haven't played on the PlayStation for years, you will not have played this game. No, and I this is haven't. this is uh, Heavy Rain. Have you played this, Steve? I haven't played Heavy Rain. Uh, it's it, it's a game that I was kind of waiting to like to pick up secondhand for quite cheap, but never. Never I think I, I got it full price when it came out because I was like, this is a different kind of game, different mechanic again, I want to explore it. And it is, it's like a cinematic film, a uh, cinematic um, <laughs> game. You know, it, it's uh, basically a film all the way through. Go on, Lou. Sam, sorry. No, it's, I was saying, it's, like, it's like an interactive movie sort of thing, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, speaking of interactive movies, there's actually uh, uh, an early one, if you remember Dragon's Lair. Yes. Yeah. Uh, where it was all quick time events. It's like it's like a really early heavy rain, and it was really a really cool animation. It was like the old Disney stuff, and yeah. uh, you just you had to time things exactly right, or you had to jump over. Anyway, the moment that I'm talking about here that's um, coming up is the guy that you play in the uh, game, and I can't remember his name. Looks like Tom York. <laughs> nothing like Tom York. What's his name, Sam? Do you know? Do I you can't know remember that? his name. Um, I know his son's called Jason. Press X to Jason. Jason. Yeah. <laughs> there's a moment right at the beginning of the game where you have to press X to call your son's name and it just goes Jason, Jason oh, and there was a, mem, a meme that went around for ages that was somebody, I saw a Jason. video on YouTube of somebody doing a, a glitch where they where it was the end of the game really emotional stuff and they had the Jason prompt I've seen that yeah <laughs> so people were just talking like we can't go on he's just like right. Jason <laughs> what's, what's just about to happen in this cutscene is he's just about to chop his own finger off now part of I the literally a cutscene sorry so, so it's quite oh. literally a cutscene. No, 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 it's not. You see all the prompts on the screen. This is oh, you moving around it. and doing things. Anyway, you're supposed to pick up the yeah. weapon that you're going to do it with, and part of it is you're trying the whole game. You're trying to find your son's um, kidnapper, and it's someone called the Origami Killer, and he keeps leaving you um, 
like clues and keeps leaving you tasks to do. This one is something called the lizard task or something, or something to do with lizards, I can't remember off the top of my head. Yeah. But you've got a choice to either, within five minutes, as you can see on that little PDA down the bottom, within five minutes you've got to either find something to chop your own finger off or not chop your finger off. And obviously that affects other things in the game later as well. It's really quite clever. There's All of it is quick time events. But it's... I, th I, I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed the story. I enjoyed trying to work out who the killer was and, and that kind of thing. Um, I was actually going to show a video of who the killer was, but I think I'll leave that because I think that is a bit of a too big a spoiler for people who do want to play it because it's all about finding out who the killer is um you can you guys can watch the video if you want but anyway this is at the moment at this particular moment it's actually taking forever i should have really watched this shouldn't i before i put the link in there <laughs> this whole moment is is leading up to you chopping your finger off and it's a quite a well imagine chopping your own finger off or having to because you want to find your child you know that's the kind of moment that it is it's so Come reason, on, the guy mate. played this has picked up every sharp thing. You only need one sharp thing, bruv. Like, why are you getting every knife that's in the house? Just get one and do it. Maybe he thinks the more <laughs> sharp things you have, the quicker he'll be able to cut his finger off. <laughs> He's, He's got a bit of choice two left, of them. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it, it, the, the way that they did the game, see all those things that are popping up, say, scare, determined, etc. The, all the way through the game you can kind of choose what kind of response you're going to give. You don't choose the words but you choose like this is a you know, determined response or whatever. And here we go, he's he's chosen, oh no, he's putting stuff down. I don't know. I'm going to have to fast forward because he's doing my head in this guy. <laughs> anyway, the moment you actually do it is uh, here we go, I think. I think. Don't do it, Tom. You won't be able to play the guitar anymore. There we go. Yeah, it's better. It's better when you play the game. But <laughs> <laughs> get to be there. You have there's, to be um, there. There's also another point in that game. Ethan, that's his name. Ethan. Ethan. There's a there's a point later on when you get another. It's right near the end, and the task is you get sent to this guy's house with a gun, and it's basically like kill him. Just go to this guy. Go to this guy's house and kill him. He's a drug dealer. And you go there, and you walk into this, his house, and then he starts running away from you, and you run into his kid's bedroom, and you just run into this kid's bedroom with all its toys on the floor and that, and you're like, whoa. And the guy's on the floor, and you've got a gun to his head. And he's there going, don't, man, like, I'm a father, I'm a father. And you can decide like not to kill him, and sort of walk away and go, like, I can't do this, and you don't get the, clue, the last clue to where your kid is, but you can still complete it without it if you're smart and figure out where your kid is. Yeah. Or you can decide to kill him, and he just goes like, wait, don't do it, I'm a father. And Ethan just goes, so am I, and blows his head off. And it's really, that's a really cool moment as well. And I actually paused the game and genuinely sat and thought, I was like, do I need this clue? <laughs> like, or do, do, I, do I not want to kill this guy? I, I had a lot of moments like that in that game in general. There was a lot of moral dilemmas in your head. And it's like, how can it, you know, it's a game at the end of the day. I know I'm invested in the story, but why do I care so much what happens to this guy? Well, we've, spent so much the last ep we've spent the whole episode talking about why we care so much. I know, I know, but it's still <laughs> to me, it's still it's still re really weird because it, you do have that suspension of disbelief when you when you play a game. It isn't real, you know, but you still get really invested in the characters. So there is, I suppose, an argument there for does does a game affect you as a person? Does it make you want to do things and murder people, etc.? But again, only totally, you. Totally other show. Totally other show. Um, have you guys got anything else? Because I'm going to show one last thing, and it's not because this is particularly brilliant or anything, but I'm going to show no, one I'm last happy, thing and then get off. I'm happy with mine. I was actually hoping you were going to show this bit because I like this bit as well. You know what? We haven't mentioned a single one of the Metal Gear Solid ones that I've put in there. Thank God. You know what? Let me finish it with a Metal Gear Solid one. I'll show you <laughs> this one first. <laughs> you could look a bit more interested, guys. Right, so this <laughs> is... This is a moment that I found particularly great in uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare, the single player game. And everyone, I think, finds this this moment. It's what it's in a lot of top tens, I believe. Um, and it is a good part. The, the single player of Modern Warfare is a very good game. It looks beautiful. It's got good scripting. It's got great handling and everything like that. But this well is um, yeah, well paced. This is a, a quite a quiet mission. You basically spend the entire time setting up. What happened there? I think it's loading. You spent the entire time setting up for uh, a sniper shot. 
Uh, and you're in Chernobyl, so you're in this irradiated... Uh... You're technically in Pripyat. Okay, whatever. Um, Chernobyl you, you... was a power station itself. Okay, right, sorry. Well, anyway, you're in the town near it, and um, you're setting up ready for this, and there's some... I can't even remember the story, I'll be honest, but the, the criminal organisation that you're fighting against, one of the main guys is there, and you're meant to go and take him out. Um, but it's a great, it's a great set piece. It feels like a movie. The whole thing. It feels like you, like now, for example, it's fast forward in time, so you get like a feeling of how long you have to wait to set this shot up because you've already spent twenty minutes setting up, walking around. Then you wait around for the guy to turn up, and then you've got things like um, one of the things that the that you, the guy with you is it Sergeant Price? Yeah, you get Sergeant it. Price. You, know, you are playing a Sergeant Price at this point because it's a flashback. All oh, right, yes. So now we start that the other guy, your trainer or whatever, your sergeant, he he's telling you how to do it and he's also telling you that the wind changes the sniper shot, the di direction of it, and it also the Coriolo, Cori Coriolis effect of the earth also makes a difference because you're so far away. And then as soon as you've made the shot and you've hit him, which is a lot more difficult than you'd think. This would be considered a death, by the way, if I was doing it, and I would be hundreds of them. It took me ages to get this right. Mm. Um, because you can oh, see, you see the, the flag. You see the flag, yeah. Yeah, and it's really difficult to gauge it because you've got to go down and left and or right or whatever, and you've got to not kill anyone else. You have to just kill him. And there's people walking they... in front of him and behind him all the time. And you can't actually kill him, can you? Don't you just take his arm off? Yeah, you blow his arm off. I can't remember. Whatever. You're supposed to hit him, aren't you? He's the villain of the game, so you don't kill him till the end of the game. Yeah. No, but the whole level, the whole level is a moment to me. It is. It's. It's worth playing just that level. I think. It's interesting that this video anymore, you've got, you? this video that you've got here, actually, to my mind, skips past the best part of that level, which is the sneaking bit beforehand when McMillan's with you, mm. or whatever he's called. It's just like, right, move up, and you move up. And it's like one, two, three, shoot. You both take out the guys at the same time. Oh, yeah, that bit is, is so <coughs> cool. That's my favourite bit that, of I it said, all. Because I knew the level was quite long, I thought I'd bring it on to the end part. Yeah, but yeah. yeah there, there is a, there's a whole section right at the beginning of the game where you, you're doing this and he's he's telling you what to do and when to shoot and both of you shoot in unison. and It's just really cool. It's just a really good military-style operation yeah. set up. And you've got a choice as well. They can choose whether to sneak up or like to avoid them or to take them out silently. And mm -hmm. the computer-controlled character will play along with what your decision is. Yeah, yeah. Right, Sam, can you have a look at the uh, at the list and yeah. the Metal Gear Solid ones and tell me which one you'd prefer out of all of those moments? Oh, hang on. Because there's, there's about seven <laughs> um, we could have right, we shown. If, <clears throat> if I'm going to pick one, because it's the one that I added, I'm going to pick um, the, spoiler obviously, the death of Grey Fox in the first Metal Gear Solid when you fight in Metal Gear Rex. Um, when he turns up to save you and dies okay um, it's quite a long video now again it's one of those a bit like the Final Fantasy one where if you're not invested in the story it's hard to sort of gauge the impact of it but basically this cyborg ninja um, turns out to be an old comrade of yours um, Frank Yeager the Grey Fox and all throughout the game he's been kind of like an antagonist but also helping you and at the end he finally comes out and just outright helps you fight Metal Gear Rex saves your life um, it is. It's again quite an emotional moment as well. Even though, it even is. though he's, he's jumping around as a cool, cool ninja slicing up many, a machine, but then his arm gets sliced off here, and you're like, "Oh, damn!" Because this guy's been totally nails and invincible throughout the rest of the game, uh, and then he gets slammed up against the wall by Metal Gear, and then just coming up in a second, it cuts back to you with the Stinger missile launcher, and it basically liquid sort of taunting you to, to shoot, and you, you try and shoot, and Snake goes, it's no good, I can't do it! So you can't, you try and shoot him like, as a player, and the character of Solid Snake won't let you do it, he's like, no, I can't kill him, he's, my, he's one of my oldest friends. Um, this is actually quite a long cutscene, the actual death of Grey Fox comes a bit after this. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then he, he drops him, after he's done the little bit with the missile launcher, he drops him onto the floor, and Liquid, in Metal Gear Rex, just cruelly just crushes him to, to smush beneath his foot and like snake goes Fuck! It's, like really loud and then you're back to fighting metal gear rex and by that time you so want to kill liquid yeah you so want liquid. to kill him you're like i want to kill you liquid. liquid's Remember? like the scorpion killer from um from he's like he's a really bad 
uh, antagonist, if in my opinion, Liquid. In terms of is his it? acting and his accent <laughs> and well, everything about him, he's he's like that all the time, you know. Very Japanese, yeah, yeah. like <laughs> he's quite over the top. But you so want to kill him, though. You want you want to smash his face in. I, I, I meant bad, bad antagonists. I mean, I hate him. I don't mean bad as in he's a bad bad guy, you know. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I. Uh, that would make him a good antagonist. This yeah, could, he's, this could be it. Yeah, just gruesome, man. There we go. Dead as doesn't even show you it. It's that gruesome. Oh no, he doesn't. He he has a bit more time to talk. Gives him a little speech oh, right. about being, <laughs> not being tools of the government or anything else. Yeah. And then he gets smushed, and Snake screams, and then you're back to fighting Metal Gear Rex, and it's very emotionally charged. We've got so many other moments on this list, but we are going to have to close the show. It's been nearly three hours this time. Yeah. Um, sorry, guys, if you had anything else to do. You could have told me <laughs> if, you, if you didn't want to continue. <laughs> well, we enchanted, we now. kept banging on about Metal Gear. Hey? I said we enchanted, but you kept banging on about it. <laughs> uh, I, I, uh, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I tried not to. <laughs> desperately tried not to. Right, anyway, so, um, yeah, while we're watching this, I will do our outro. We are... Finish for the day. Thanks for watching, everybody. And um, yeah, we've got a, we've got a show on Friday at six thirty uh, UK time. And sorry, that's going to be me, Lou, and Steve playing Planet Explorers. Uh, again, we're, I, th I think we'll probably have a two or three hour playthrough. We, we've got to a point where we started to make bases and possibly going to start playing playing with vehicles and other cool stuff in the game. It's it's alright. It's not it's not the best game in the world, but we're enjoying it so far. Yes sir, really sell it, Chris. Lou's Lou's yeah. face then just went, Oh God, what is he saying? Why do I let him speak? <laughs> it isn't the best game in the world. It's it's buggy as sh it's buggy as shit, isn't it? It's it's fun though, with with three people. It's a good good laugh, even if twenty foot aliens kill us. It's the seconds. greatest game in the entire world and we're gonna play it exclusively just for you. Yeah. Because we love you. Alright. I'll let, I'll let do let, let do I'll let Lou do the um <laughs> the pimping from now on. So you got if you watch sell, it or your wildest dreams will sell, come true. Sell Monday night then. So on Monday night, Chris will be playing Metal Gear Solid. <laughs> I say playing, he will be attempting to play. He'll be basically running under every tank that he can find. Um, Sam There's will no be finding tanks. expert co commentary, and hopefully myself and Steve will be poking fun at him while I play. And every time that Chris dies, I should be donating one pound to um, Child's Play Charity. Uh, we'll tally up the score at the end, and hopefully I won't be too broke. Uh, yeah, and, and Lou has uh, also said that he's going to do it for the entire series. So that's, that's it. Uh, the, whole, the whole Metal Gear Solid series that they're planning to play. I, I've told him that was a bad idea, but he's... Well, it's for a good cause. And I'll tell you what, if it's too much, I'll, I'll help. I have you, Chris. I I, if, it, yeah. if it's too much, yeah. I'll, I'll chip in. If, if yeah, me too. out of hand, I'll chip in as well. Yeah. I will as and well. also, if we're considering putting out some kind of donation button for Child's Play in general. We might even just link just directly to the site or something because we haven't got much time to set one up yeah. properly. We also might possibly do some kind of do donation incentive. So if you want us to do certain things in the games, then we can give you some options and whoever chips in for that, don't, that incentive will do that thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll work um, that out. There's uh, lots of there's lots of choices in these games that me me and Sam can pick out that you know we can go one way or the other, depending on what you want. Personally, to do. I'd I'd pay extra to see the um see the <laughs> the exploding wheelchair. I'd pay for that. <laughs> yeah, that's if I can do it. I might have to reload the game like six times <laughs> over to do it. You've got you've got to be fast, haven't you, and get him in the head I quickly. Christ. I've never done it. I don't even know where it is exactly. I know I know the part, but I I don't know where I'd have to do it. Hopefully we'll work that out between us, though. Um, yeah. So, yeah, we're going to do Metal Gear Solid 1, 2, 3. Um, we're doing 2, 3, and... It's 4, then Peace Walker, in terms of when they were released. Okay, so we'll do 1, 2, 3, and then Peace Walker, but we're doing the H H HD versions. Excuse me. Um, and then Ground Zeroes, and then uh, potentially... Hopefully by then Sam will have played Ground Zeroes because it's going to be months until we actually get to yeah, that point. Yeah. I think. Um, uh, Ground Zeroes and then Phantom Pain when it comes out. Um, I'd, again, we'll probably want to play Phantom Pain. Oh, on I didn't, our I own didn't say anything about Phantom Pain. What? I, I, 
I can't have you playing a game that you've never played before. Well, I haven't played um, that other one. I've forgotten the name uh, of it again. Uh, Peace Walker. Peace Walker. Yes, I haven't played Peace Walker ever. Oh, and I've this, not completed this, this three. deal's getting shittier oh, by the moment. Look, I, I told you. <laughs> I told you it was a bad idea, but no. Oh, no, I'll be fine. I have faith in you, Chris. It's not the maybe... amount of faith that you have in me. It's the length of these games. That's the problem. You could maybe play Peace Walker on easy, eh? And just because you've not played it before. I don't know. Nah, see what we get there. Normal. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. <laughs> right, so yes, everyone, thanks for chatting. I'm afraid I haven't engaged you that much because I've been busy with videos, but thanks for, ch thanks for coming. Um, and we'll she'll see you next week. Yeah, we'll see you. Bye. Oh, any, any other pimping to do? No, no. Nope, that's it. No, nope. I, think, I think we're good. <laughs> no, I'm, think, I'm looking at the list if there was anything else that we needed to uh, we're back say. On, we're back on Friday. Obviously, yes, I keep I keep forgetting to do this, and this is shameless um, promotion for, for Resonance Arcade. Um, obviously, get, get on our Twitch, Twitter, and YouTube channels. Um, it's forward slash Resonance Arcade for everything. Uh, on top of that as well, um, any videos that we've used in the uh, in the podcast will be putting in the, the show notes um, for on YouTube when we upload it and we will probably have a content ID match for this video at least one I imagine if not 20 but we're doing it for the love so we're doing it for the love us, but it's, some slack come yeah, on yeah that's the thing it's like I will dispute them but it doesn't mean they wouldn't give us a copyright strike depending on who it is they can do it unfortunately and it means that we wouldn't be able to upload a lot more longer than 15 minutes onto YouTube if that happened um well yeah we'll see we'll see how that goes um Lou is behind the cool down episodes. I am, but I'm going to catch up this week. So four, five, and six, I think we need still. Yep. Um, he's going to catch up this week, as he said, but I don't believe. I it. am. One second, uh, and that's it. Yeah. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Love you. Bye. Bye. Hey, bye, bye. <laughs>